The next step is destabilization. Again, this word says for itself what it is. To destabilize all the relations, all the accepted institutions and organizations in a country of your enemy. How you do it? You don't have to send up a battalion of KGB agents to blow up bridges. No. You let them do it themselves. And there are violent clashes between him and police, his group and, and ordinary people, no matter what. It's black against white, yellows against green, doesn't matter where the division line goes. As long as this group come into antagonistic clash, sometimes militantly, sometimes with firearms, that is destabilization process. Destabilization uh, process usually leads directly to the process of crisis. Crisis is when society cannot function any more productively, it collapses. So therefore, the population at large is looking for a savior. Let's have a strong government, maybe socialist government, centralized. When we need some strong man, a savior comes and says, I will lead you. So we have two alternatives here. Civil war and invasion. Okay? See how it goes? Civil war, we know what it is. Lebanon is, is the best example. The civil war, which was artificially implanted in Lebanon by injection of force of PLO. Invasion we had in many other countries, like any East European country, it, it was invaded by the Soviet army. But the result is the same. The next stage is normalization. 42% of the political guests on Joe Rogan's podcast are Jewish, a group which makes up only 2% of the U.S. population. Let's talk about the action slash adventure slash athlete category, which I just marked all with an A. This group contains all pro athletes, extreme athletes like the extreme marathon guys, non-MMA fighters, uh, things like that. Funny enough, despite the fact that 210 guests fell into this category, a whopping zero of them were Jewish. Which funnier still means that this category is actually closest to being in line with the Jews' 2% population figure. Native Americans are also about 2% of the U.S. population. Imagine if half of the guests he had on his show were Native Americans. Don't you think someone would point this out at least? Like, even not maliciously, just like, hey, isn't this kind of weird? Why does this keep happening? And you would be foolish to assume that all these Native Americans kept coming on a show by accident. It was just circumstance. Obviously something. This, Mr. Secretary, is a bag of bushings. This bag of bushings, stamped out by machinists, don't need a high, don't need a, you know, they need a high school uh, uh, diploma. It's not, not anything high tech about this. All of this bag is compliant with the FAA specifications. How much do you think the Air Force pays for this bag of bushings? I don't know, Congressman. Ninety thousand dollars. This is a ninety thousand dollar bag of bushings that you need for. Any jet turbine engine, just to operate. So the exorbitant cost due to DOD only buying commercial parts from the OEMs, which is essentially sole source, is literally driving us out of business. I mean, the interest on our debt alone is now exceeding for the first time in American history the entire defense budget. We can't afford it anymore. Uh, I, I think well, what is going to happen in the future if you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to get the consent of the ruled. And this they will do, partly by drugs, as I foresaw in, uh, in Brave New World, partly by these uh, new techniques of uh, propaganda. They will do it by bypassing the sort of rational side of man and appealing to his uh, subconscious and his uh, deeper emotions and uh, his physiology even. And so making him actually love his slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new uh, regime, but they will be happy in situations where they oughtn't to be happy. And now, the weather forecast with Greta Thunberg. Hot! That was the weather with Greta Thunberg. Our nation is too full of those that are crying down. Down with the police! Down with the churches! Down with government! Can you build anything down? And let's begin now to use the word up. Up from all of this filth. Up from this violence. Up from this indifference of courts. Up! Up to the hit battlements of eternity. Up! Up! To God!
Hello. It is I, your non-Jewish friend. Jinala! <laughs> mm. It wasn't that long. It wasn't that long. Who do we have here? I want to invite someone. That person. We have Mango. Hello, good sir, Mango. Kirby. Yeah, I just I hit a button. It sets the time. I don't care. As long as it's not immediately. Mm, Bill Ned, hello. We have a Canadian here. No one here is from America. A Canadian, a Russian, and a Japanese walk into a Jewish bar. And an Australian, drunk. Hype around Rogan. What do you mean? Bigger liar and Kissinger. I don't know. The intros? What are you getting at? I don't have the bloodline to be uh, that. Do you see my eye? Well, Jews have brown eyes. You can't say that. Nemesis. I did send it to Mike. I sent Mike the link. What's up, Kirby? How are you? My fellow uh, Japanese immigrant with bad allergies. The show begins now with the host and Chintel, J. Dallas. Hi. I like that. But you don't live here anymore. Kiss. Did he say something earlier? Did I miss him? Am I stupid? Besides that. Oh, okay, good. Was that a thing? People not knowing what bull? I am not Canadian. My daughter likes a, a man, a boy. I don't know what he is. From Canada. It's kind of gross. I do have French descendancy, but like uh, <clears throat> the Canadians. You have such a large land might. Landmass, such small population, and you, you can't control Justin Trudeau. Like, it just shows, like, the bitch-assery that, can, like, Canada has. I don't know. Um, what's up, LeKim? What's up, black guy? You're not stupid, even though you literally just read my comment. Yeah, I know. I, I, I meant before that. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. Like I felt like I had missed you before that comment. Do y'all know Maria Abramovich? Uh, the person who's descendant from. Did I say hi to Risey? Look him. Hello. Risey. Risey looks like me. Is that weird? Yes, the spirit cooker. Spirit cooker. I wonder how many children she's cooked. Marie. Where are you from? Fuck 
okay, okay, last 68 of, of hours, it's pure hell, I'm so happy I'm here in London and not there, it's it's just, I was going to aeroport with the salt in heaven, you know that I am... So, so you've been accused, just, just give some context to our listeners if they yeah. don't know, you've been accused essentially of, of, of doing black magic in order to help Hillary Clinton, I mean that's that's kind of... Where we, we are, are with spirit, this. We had a spirit cooking dinner right. with a king blood, <laughs> yeah, exactly. basically. Right. Okay, yeah. this is how insanity of this election is. It's just incredible. So I have to just tell you, first of all, what just what is happening now? I my 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 uh, email become public. I have to change my email. I have to change my telephone. My all credit cards are blocked. I can't I can't take any money out. It's it's incredible because everything been hacked. So what happened is that uh, I, I give context to the public. You know I have the my art institute called Ramage Ramage Marina Institute for Long Duration Performance Art. So. I've been raising for the money through Kickstarter. Tony Podesta, who is the brother of, of John Podesta, it's... Tony Podesta. You know what's so interesting about Tony Podesta? Amit. Is Amit here? Amit's sister. What? What are you talking about? What's up, Chris Stanley? My big ninja. Anyway, 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 anyway. The people who bought um, Tony Podesta and his um, brother to the United States, not only were they Ukrainian, but they brought him to a pig farm that was just miles away from the Saudi Arabian facility and a CIA facility. So this motherfucker comes from a foreign country with a Ukrainian woman who, who breeds twins. And he somehow lands in Maryland right next to the Saudi Arabia, which by the way, that Saudi Arabian embassy burnt to the ground, or not embassy, that Saudi Arabian compound burnt to the ground next to the CIA facility, next to a pig farm. What's up, Risey? All right. All right, all right. What, do got, what do you got to say about that? Um, about pig farms? My auntie was born on a pig farm. Uh, she grew up to... Uh, direct the movie pig in the city for real nice no i made that up <laughs> i don't know i got nothing <laughs> i just it would be that fucking actor. interesting man. <laughs> right cal Penn from heroin kumar yeah he's totally gay, and gay. He became... yeah. is that totally. the one um is that the little asian looking dude What's yeah, up, Chris? Yeah. What's up, Nemesis? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you could kind of tell he was gay in when you were watching the movies, to tell you the truth. They try to do those, uh, what was that movie where they got lost in America with the, um, with the Crystal Burgers? What was that fucking movie? Oh, uh, White, uh, White Castle. Yeah, what was that stupid movie? Yeah, 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 I think it was just called. I think it was called White Castle or Let's Go to White Castle. Yeah, they try to do those white American films, and now the one dude's a total homosexual who hangs out with Obama, and the other one does like uh, horror films. You know, so it's huh. it's, it's quite fucking. Big. I didn't see that other guy being into horror, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the uh, the other dude. What's the other dude? Yeah, I liked I liked White Castle. The other movies, I think they did two more movies after that one. Um, they weren't as good, but they had their moments. What's up, Christopher John? What's up, brother? What's up, John? Who is Hillary Clinton's campaign manager? Exactly, he is. The, my collector since more than 30 years of my work and friend. So he helped with donating some money to this institute, like many other people, 4,500 people to tell you. And then I had the rewards, and some rewards is the dinner with me. So I invite 10 people for this dinner and call Spirit Cooking, because Spirit Cooking is my work since I do it since 90s. And it is... 
spirit cooking is the work that she's done since the 90s. Yeah, what is that bait? It's like you take like human ejaculant, like animal ejaculant, their blood, uh, bought, uh, parts of the animal, and you and you mix it together, and you do like a uh, 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 esoteric rit ritual. You know, like you you dance and bathe in in this extra. Ah, looks like some fucking. Um spiritual hipster fucking shit yeah, yeah she's a dude who's like uh manipulated uh jay-z <laughs> well honestly let's be fair the devil manipulated anyone that works well, in that fucking circle this maria yeah, well, abramovich maria abramovich is uh Romanian. so you, you referred to it as a dude before am i to assume that this identifies as a man or you just no. said dude she's like totally how i used yeah, she's totally, she's, a chick. Uh, she's a chick. She's been showing her vagina since the 70s. So she's totally Jesus chick. Christ. Who the fuck wants to see that thing? Well, she's been doing this crazy Paris, Brussels, like where she would do the art shows where naked men would be like in the pillar of the door frames and you would have to like walk by. Like she is the person who started all this stupid That's ass weird. art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She you like and you have to like brush by their dicks to get past the doorway, like and that's art to them. This is that bitch who started it. That just seems like sexual harassment to me, but you know, you can call it art. Yeah. And they also and also her family killed uh the Russian monarchy. Uh with uh Rasputin. It's actually poetry, you know, like I, I will say such a, a work since I do it since 90s and it is actually poetry, you know, like I, I will say such a, let's say I'll tell you one, one of the of the spirit cooking recipe, take 13 um, leaves of green cabbage, fresh green cabbage, and mix with the 13 uh, grams of pure jealousy, uh, put in the deep iron pot. Yeah, crazy. It's bit. weird that, um, She's she's got her camera like that, and she's doing those hand gestures to like, you know, like to uh, I forget the word, but people do hand gestures to emphasize emphasize their points. Um, yeah. But like the camera is at a different angle, so it's weird that she's doing it that way. Yeah, she has a terrible. Well, she's she's uh, like Russian, Ukrainian. So whatever I mean, I don't, I don't know, Southern Russian. I don't know. In female Russian accents of all, I've never understood how some people can say they're attractive. I'm like nothing against the Russian people, um, but man, your bitches sound like fucking villains. No matter how hot they are, I don't care. Yeah, they all look like, like villains. Like, like you don't on my bed. I can't do a Russian accent, but like you, you don't on my bed. I'm gonna chop off your penis right here. And then I'm gonna put it up your bum. And I'm the like, only Harold, the only Harold and Kumar movie I watched was the White Castle one. I didn't watch any of the other. Yeah, I've ones. seen all of them. I can't remember what order they go in. I think there's only three. Yeah. I'll be right back. My brother just got out. Serbian. Yeah. Okay. So she's she, okay. So like Northern Russian. You, you you should have expected that, like with like her facial features and her her big nose and all that. Like she got that. I'm from Sir. Like you know what I mean. Like they look different. The people in the mountains and in the snow. Blah 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 blah. No, I don't think any. I tried to watch um, oh, fuck Pineapple Express the other day, and I stopped. I'll probably start watching it again, but like you can't rewatch these. So you say they're funny, but they're not. They're not funny. I am not going to jog, bro. You can't give me a jog. Kiss. I used to do, what is it, the 50 yard dash and the 150 or 200 yard dash, whatever. 
whatever the one is above the 50 yards. I'm done with that. Done. They're not funny. Shut up, Mango. Watch them now. They're not funny. All right, so I have I have some some other interesting things. I wanted to go over this one because I thought it was I thought you know the people who watch my stream they know I'm aut an autistic retard. So, um, all right, all right. I was just talking to my brother. He just got back from work. Just had to talk to him about some shit. All right, what do you what do you think of this? The F thirty five. A lot of empty seats. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're in Bosnia? Nice. So what do you think of the UN after they, uh, the Srebrenica and they murdered your... Oh, this was the UN? All your neighbors and all that. No. So how do you get one happened? of those awesome seats at the table? Like, how, who decides who sits where? Is it by like a comedy, um, military power? So in the House of Representatives, this is a um, this is a lower committee. So in the lower committee, you have a much higher number of seats. And the higher in the rank of the committee, importance, top secret shit, and all that, the lower amount of seats. It goes to like sixteen or you know, uh, I think nine or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. An odd number with a with a chairman, but the, uh, so um, in the United States we have a thing called the F thirty five, and it, it not only can the F thirty five not fly in the rain, but they don't fucking work, <laughs> and and they're I'm they're a waste of fucking money. Go ahead. I was just laughing that it can't fly in the fucking rain. <laughs> it can't fly in the fucking rain. We would have won the war, but it was winter and it was just raining <laughs> endlessly. These are our military jets, bro. And they can't, the F-35 can't fly in the rain. And so anyway, you this happened either today or yesterday. What percentage of them are fully mission capable today? Mr. Secretary. Congressman, if you give me a second, I'm going to pull up my card and give you an exact answer. Okay. I'm happy to. You hope your eyes are probably better. Right. Right. Come on, Grandpa. Get your reading glasses out. It's the number we have for avail operational availability. Full operationally capable. 55%. For operational that, do you think that's a good <laughs> number? 55%. I don't know your fucking dick about what they're talking about, man, but that's not good numbers. Bro, that means you got forty-five percent of useless fucking aircraft. The, so, so of those fifty-five percent, it can't fly in the rain. So keep that in mind. That's not brought up, but just keep that in mind. Failing. I wouldn't put it quite in that category. I'm not asking General Alvin to comment on that. It, it's a number we'd like to see something. Yeah, because well, the closer. reason I asked, the reason I ask is because we got we got testimony that is a little contrary to that, Lieutenant General. Schmidt, head of the uh, F-35 program, gave testimony to the TAL subcommittee at HASC. Uh, and, that's, and that testimony was that as of February of 2023, so a little over a year ago, only 29% were fully mission capable. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, you're you're all a lying second shit, bro. <laughs> all I can do is laugh. What's up, Anthony? What's up, bro? What's up, DJ? It gets worse. I, I still sometimes talking. almost got to call you trash, and he DJ. I apologize. <laughs> I almost did just then. I was like, "What's up, no, no, no. <laughs> we kill." <laughs> What's up, uh, Chulu? Twenty-nine. We're fully mission capable. I, I think we need to Wait, pause to this. Pause this. I, I'll turn my camera on. I found this today. That's when Stroke Cthulhu. What's up? What are yeah, you saying? Turn my camera on. Uh, Look at this. Yeah. How do I? It's a little Cthulhu. 
Nice. Don't we look alike? It's similar, yeah. I got a lot more bags under my eyes. But actually, yours are pretty baggy at the moment, too. Yeah, that's just the amount of weed we fucking smoke. <laughs> But yeah, I found that Cthulhu today. I was like, next time I see Cthulhu, I gotta fucking show it to him. Mm. It is uncanny. It's very uncanny. We look exactly alike. Our mothers are descendant of each other somehow. <laughs> it would be fucking surprising. I mean, we could have some sort of ancestral blood. If you've got like ancestors that come from Canada, one of my grandfathers parents come from Canada I have family members that moved from Ohio to Canada but that was very very recent so it wouldn't like for the time in our age because aren't you in your mid 30s you're in your mid 30s right yeah 36 this year yeah it wouldn't so we don't have any but it just shows we got strong strong genes at least we're not fat and bold. <laughs> uh, anyway, back to this. Ability. Okay. And mission capable. Okay, so how many are fully mission capable today? I do not have that number, but I, I would not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, uh, that, what the JPO has in front. Now, so I would look. 29%. So fully mission capable, 29%. You have no basis to dispute that, but you don't really know if it's true or false. I have no basis to dispute it, but I, I, I would like to. So you would agree that 55% is like a D, the 29% is definitely failing, right? For full mission capable. But yeah, the missions so that they can accomplish. I, just, I, go, I go meet with the folks at the 33rd at Eglin Air Force Base in the district I represent, and they're doing a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, of, of mission there. But like e even the guys who are also at Eglin doing tests, they end up being at the very end, right? And I totally get why you want your operational squadrons to be the most capable, but then test gets put to the end, and then we're not meeting our needs. Like, I just think anyone watching this, one, would be surprised that you, General, don't know the exact percentage that are operationally capable. And two, I think people would be surprised. That it What's up? <laughs> That's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> Dude, this guy is ripping these guys that you asked oh, what's his fucking name Matt Mick Getz, G -A -E -T -T. <laughs> he is brilliant his dad's a billionaire he's loving this isn't he the little cocksucker you can see it his dad's a billionaire and he um he has no need for any money so you can't buy him off you can't you can't buy off this guy and he every single committee he ass rapes um anyone he, he he has his sights on i i like matt man he's and he yeah like, i gotta say i don't know much about this guy but I, i'm liking the way that like he he's literally like there's three people there he's sitting alone and he's just like bro look at my fucking immaculate fucking hair man i am fucking roasting the shit out of you you guys are dumb you're ugly look at how sexy i am i'm apparently a billionaire's son now i just found out so lick my fucking dick your jets suck and you're just going to have to come out and say they fucking suck. Yeah. Yeah. You, you find out why they suck a little bit later. So It's 29%. And this GAO report uh, that I found on breakingdefense.com that I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record, um, it, it says that the reason we are not capable is because you guys at the Pentagon have given too much power <laughs> to Lockheed Martin and its subcontractors for the, for sustainment. Do you believe Lockheed Ma Martin has been given too much power on, on the sustainment of the F-35? I believe that Lockheed Martin has more power than in some other weapon systems. They do have the contracted logistics system that was part of the procurement plan that was put in place 20 or some years ago. Well, right, I mean, but it's not working. If, if, the, if the Lockheed Martin built the F-35, we only can, only 29% of them are fully operationally capable right now. We've all agreed that's failing. So now the question is, why is it failing? And this GAO report says the reason it's failing 
is because the fox is watching the hen house. Because the very contractor bilking the taxpayer for this platform is now in a position where they can't sustain it. Do you, do you have a basis to disagree with that conclusion? I have a long history with the F-35, and uh, I inherited the program. Mm. No, it's not about getting uh, – China has already stolen the F-35 diagrams. That was um, uh, that was years ago at this point. But you remember – who was that um, – who was that girl, that little girl who was kidnapped and murdered? Um, not Gordon Ramsay. Jesus, man, you fucking, it's not really nailing it down. <laughs> the little blonde girl who was kidnapped. That's also not nailing down. The only thing I know, like, is it the F-35 that took down the Chinese spy balloon, though? John Bonet Ramsey. All right, so let me let me give you all a little history about, about, about the John Benet Ramsey family. Yo, that family is tied to the the black box patents. Like they kidnapped his daughter, and he would not give up. You know, the codes, essentially. God and damn. Yeah, and what's interesting is this, not only is the shit that they carved into her hand and in the letter that they signed when they murdered her and found her, um, it, it was tied to uh, to the French. Holy shit, man. I wish a lot of true crime stories on YouTube. I've never heard anything about this. Yeah, he he's totally tied to the to, to that that black box, the thing that they put into the airplanes in Boeing and yeah, 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 yeah. I know what that is. Yeah, he's, it's he's like the one thing that's meant to be happening. Yeah, he's tied to all of that shit, and um, so you know, you know what's so funny is he started dating a woman who also had their child kidnapped. And, and, you know, I find that very odd that two people who had who are tied to to, to very important things that are happening. Yeah, and, yeah that's that's that is kind of and, and they get together and both of their their children had been kidnapped. It doesn't make it this the statistical. Yeah, odd. what would now, what, you know, what would be now, I don't wish this on anyone, but what would be really fucked up if they got together, had a kid. And then that kid got kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. That would be a great movie. It would <laughs> that would be great. Just like that. no one wants these kid people to have kids. <laughs> you just put Tom Hanks in it and it's it's done. <laughs> you put Tom Hanks in that. He, he wanted to do Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to think about Julia Roberts, but she is tied to uh, to the Clooney's and all that. So that's that's a very hard. Now all these celebrities are Illuminati, fucking baby, virgin, blood sucking parasites. So on the Council of Foreign Relations, so Hillary Clinton was on the Council of Foreign Relations. And she only got a five-year membership. You get a five-year membership or you get a lifetime membership. George Clooney's wife is a lifetime member before the age of 30 for the Council of Foreign Relations. You know, and then not only that, you also separate Sudan. So now there's a North Sudan and a South Sudan. Your wife, how, how, how does your wife who, because you know Hillary Clinton, she's a patent lawyer, she's tied to Bayer, IG Farben, um, Presidential Airlines, uh, um, uh, Prince, Prince Eric and, and all those companies that were bought by IG Farben. And, and you only got a five-year membership, but George Clooney's chick, she gets a lifetime membership. How does that? How does that I guess. 
It just, I, it's very interesting. Graham, I came in. I never liked George Clooney. Clooney. He always. I don't know what to think of George Clooney. He's a smug cunt. I want to get him in the back of the head with a tire iron. Tire iron. I love that word. Yeah, I don't know why I choose tire iron, but I, I like. I don't want to kill him, but I want him to really fucking feel it. So I feel like a good hard hit with a tire iron will get all my George Clooney mate out. And yeah, I won't feel guilty for killing him. Are you walking, Risey? No. Why would I be walking? Because you're roboting. Oh, I'm on my phone, man. I can come back and leave. Maybe that's what it is. Sometimes that happens. Oh, okay, yeah. Come back and leave real quick then. Yeah, yeah, I'll come back and leave. Do that real quick. Clooney Clooney is evil. I have I have no no question about it. But let's go back to this real quick. It was a few years in the production at that point. And the first time I saw the program laid out uh, the schedule for it and so on and when the decisions and points were gonna be, the question I asked, and I'm gonna quote myself, who's running this program? The government or Lockheed Martin? That was a, that's a quote from 2010. I think you have your and, answer, Mr. Secretary. And we set Lockheed up the Martin. program, and it was originally set up under, under a philosophy of management called total system performance, which essentially gave to the prime contractor complete control of the program. We did not. TSP. What is TSP? Total system performance, you might ask. Not acquire the intellectual property to allow the government to come in and step in and control the program. It sounds like we have. We are still fighting that problem today. Well, right, but that is such important testimony for us to hear. I, every member of the committee heard that. The government isn't running this program. Lockheed Martin's running this program. That was a question I asked. Well, it sounds asked. like you got the answer. We, What's the we, answer to the question, Mr. Secretary? Because only 29% of them are operationally capable. We took a lot of steps to try to get that under control. I once imposed a production contract on Lockheed. I dictated a price to them because we couldn't get a negotiation done. I did a unilateral contract. Uh, let them take me to court. If they uh, what's they it like now? Better, 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 better. better, better. Yeah. Yeah, I switched the audio as well, so that might have been. So what uh, Matt Getz just asked um, Kendall, Secretary Kendall, was like, yo, who is running F-35? So let's just say we have 100 planes. The government is saying 55 of those 100 planes are working. But the real statistics saying only 29, only 29. Only 29 of those planes are working. And Matt Getz is like, who the fuck is running this program? In place, program managers who were very firm with the contractor and insisted on performance. Uh, we've had some conversations with the current head of the JPO, and uh, we've had conversations with the CEO of Lockheed. I appreciate those we conversations. I've always found you to be the truth teller. You're always very honest with the committee and straightforward. The problem is the tail here is wagging the dog, and it's not going to get better unless there's accountability for the fact that their planes don't fly. And you'll yeah, all right. Yes, got this guy. You know, some some billionaire. Dude, basically, he's basically saying you've just got a really oh, cool looking lawn ornament. A lawn ornament. Yes, they are. Well, quantities down, quantities down, but they're. I think um, a lot of these planes are actually doing operations that are on covert. Covert operations but that's it in conspiracy level so i think more of these planes are actually being used than is being credited in the public if you were to ask me because they're doing yeah because they're doing covert shit because yeah. what i don't understand because i'm not sure if it's the f-35 or is, is there an f-34 no it's like f-14 and f-16 and then all right uh, no see i yeah there's a fucking ninja i know um who always says the f-35 is fucking you know dope as shit and i'm like so this is the first time i'm hearing that they can't fucking fly in the fucking rain for fucks that's stupid man like yeah. it, what's what's the um reasoning behind that that like does it fuck up their radar the yeah. jet propulsion like what Yes, it messes up their radar, their jet propulsion, and their onboard display. Because remember, they're trying to go. So in aviation, they're trying to do onboard masking displays. 
So it's no yeah. longer on the glass plate in front of you. It's in the actual mask. And, 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 and it, it's, it's not working. It's not, publicly, it's not working. So... The, well, if, yeah, this could this could be a conspiracy where like they're only doing this so China thinks that they do suck. Well, I think they work. They're definitely being used for sure. But I don't, you know, where do you where do you draw the line on conspiracy and, and public? Um, well, in fact, public documents like so. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. Like, like I, I had, you know, like everyone supposedly has a friend who's in the in the military. Who I don't know. Like, I don't, maybe it's just me, but like, uh, you know, people disappear. Oh yeah, man. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I don't even like say. Like, I, it, that's why I was careful how I said it just then. Um, was because I don't like people to say that. Like, um, there's another person that said fucking earlier. Like. Uh, early, well, December last year, that like by the end of January, we were going to Australia. This is was going to be at the war with China, which you know, there is a lot of talk that Australia may be at war with China in a few years. Which, if we are, we are fucked, yeah. But, um, it didn't happen, and honestly, I, I've been living since like. I remember before 9-11, uh, the world was going to end. And then after 9-11, the world was going to end. And then pig flu and swine flu, or swine flu, that's what it was called, and bird flu and COVID, 2020-12, I mean, we've lived through so many world-ending air quotation things at this point. <laughs> When when something the world does fucking end, I'm gonna be like standing here thinking that's not as fucking cool as I thought it was why, gonna be. Why do you think it's gonna end? So so in twenty thirty three, that's the two thousand year anniversary of Jesus' death. So Is if, it? if you feel I this way right, if you feel this way right now. Wait until 20. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't feel like the world will end in our lifetimes. I do not feel like the world will end in till probably four it's to eight, gonna, eight generations from now. Yeah, it's not going to. There's no, there, there, bro, like, no, there's just no way it's going to end. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, no, things are just going to get a lot more fucked, a lot more restrictions with governments, and that, that'll be basically it. Yeah, more. I mean, yeah. COVID, and and I don't want I don't want to sound like one of those conspiracy theorists, but I, I believe COVID was a worldwide testing thing to see how much the powers that be can take away our freedoms in set countries that have freedom, and how much will we would take before we riot and then we rebel. It, that's that was the entire point of COVID because the next thing that is coming. That's the one that we should all be fucking scared for. I don't know what it fucking is going to be, but that's that's going to knock out like a vast majority. Of, but this, like I said, this is not going to be the end of the world. But the vast majority of the population is going to keep getting fucking shorter and shorter and shorter because we are taking up way too many resources on this earth than no. there are to really make. No, no, no. No, we're not. Yeah, I man. I mean, and I'm also not a like a, a global wormless either. Um, systems change. Like the sun, the the planets, they they go around different things. That's why it's not because of the ozone layers. It could be, but I don't believe it is hundred percent. So if if anyway, you, you know what? I just realized I'm on a fucking box. I'm gonna shut up. No, you're cool. You're cool. So if you look at the statistics that's put out. Um, the world can actually handle double, if not more, the population. So if we're having this fantastical, fantastical, you know, like we can make up the world. Yeah, but what I mean, it can, it can handle that. But when so many people want so much and then, you know, there's only so much to go around, you yeah. know, some people want more than what they actually need. 
So in 2000, so in the mid 2000s, like let's just say after 2008, before 2020, Vladimir Putin said, because you remember every year he does these events with these young entrepreneurs of Russia. Remember, Russia is like, like there's like seven or eight. I really I don't know much about, about, about Russia at all, except so for anyway, what I've seen. Anyway, in the anyway, hold on. So anyway, in that conversation, he said there's about 16,000 people that run the world. Like he said that to all of these these young individuals that came up right before Trump was entrepreneurs, nominated. motherfuckers, and shit. Yeah, yeah, because Russia is actually quite united. It's very, very, very united. It's, it's like it's the heydays of America and Russia right now. And um, if 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 back then they had sixteen thousand people, you can assume there's about twenty thousand to twenty. 24,000 or so with math that there's about that many people 30,000 people or less who who control this nonsensical system that that we're living in right um and and you have individuals who come along the way and they they sprinkle little seeds that that let you know the herpes that's spreading throughout <laughs> I like it. Spread. I'm going to use that. That's good. Yeah. And so these, you, after the 2000 year anniversary, you cannot, there's going to be a, I feel like there's going to be a paradigm swing in reality. I don't really know how to explain it. Maybe. I mean, we don't know, man. Um, See, I, I get you. Like, things might go back to more of um, the shit that we were raised on instead yeah, of the shit they're trying to raise these new generations on, where it's like, be yourself, be yourself. It's like, no, fuck you. Don't be yourself. If you identify as a horse, you are not a horse. Fuck you. Don't be yourself. You know what's so funny? You're not a horse. You know what's so funny in the Fallout show? They have like that transgender DEI character, right? In what? In the in in, in the first episode, and the first thing that character does is self harm. Of what? Oh, the Fallout show! I thought yeah. that was a trans person. The first thing that person does is self harm to get it, bro. It's it's a brilliant show. The, the new, the, the, oh, hands down, it's great. But you know, the funny thing is, I was like, is that meant to be a chick or a fucking dude? Uh, that's the point. That's the point. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's also why I've got a problem with, sorry, um, the rainbow people is because I'm like, I don't like the fact that I get confused. Like, because either way, I'm not attracted to those things, but I am always, I'm like, like the curiosity in you, you know what I mean? It's like, well, what are you, mate? You know, are, are you a chick or you're a dude? And like, you're an ugly one, either whatever you are, but what are you? It's why like, well, yeah, I tend to, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't care what your fucking fluid is, you know? Um, I piss a strong stream in the toilet. You know, my fluid runs real fucking straight. So fuck you. What's Don't like those people, man. Recruiting. We had Academy Nights recently in my district, and a new question rose to the top that I hadn't really heard uh, in, in a lot of previous years. So many students came to me and said, Congressman, which of these academies should I, try, should I go to if I want to be in the Space Force? And I think we've really ignited. Uh, I'm going to try and get my daughter in the Space Force. She's autistic. Really? Yeah, for sure. She's a fierce dragon. Space. She exercises all the time. She has like that autism I had when I was younger as a young male boy. Like she, she likes rough house. Hey, well, does she want to go to space or do you want to send her to space? Fuck her, I don't give a shit. She's, I'm going to send that bitch to Space Force. No, yeah, that's what I said. I was like, is she training to go to space? Or are you just saying that, bitch? You going to space? She's only eight, nine now. <laughs> nine. I don't want to say eight if she's awake. 
but you know, <laughs> oh, shit is funny. A sense of imagination space. and interest in the space for really ignited a sense of imagination and interest in the space force. How long until I'm able to offer these students a great space academy to attend? Congressman, thank you so much for that question. Um, I want to point out that it's 2024 and that bitch is still wearing a mask. Oh, snap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just Star noticed General. that. Three-star general in the Air Force. I would assume Air Force because it's blue. I'm the only person wearing a mask, too. Wouldn't you feel like a fucking idiot? It doesn't. So, yeah, so you got the... Dude, I used to feel like a fucking idiot when everyone else had a fucking mask. I never wore... I mean, I wore a mask when I... They were mandatory, man. It was like a $100 fine or some shit. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'll wear a mask, which was just a bit of cloth. Like, uh, you know, those masks yeah. that people on motorcycles wear. You know, I just wore that. She's wearing a mask because she's tired of brushing her... Oh, shut up, Kiss. More, a better <laughs> joke. You've done better jokes. Anyway, thank you. So we're seeing a lot of interest in, in, in our own um, data. Um, we don't have a strategy right now that says stand up our own academy. We're leveraging uh, the Air Force at the moment. Um, but I really appreciate the, the comment. Didn't you brush your head before this fucking meeting? Yeah, I think when we get these goofy ass women, and, like, so she's the representative for the Space Force. You don't even have. She's wearing clothes. shoulder pads. She's got shoulder pads. Why are you dressed like that? You look like my sister's. Uh, she looks like an accountant. She's she's an accountant. I mean, I don't want. I don't understand what she like. Look, she could have brushed her hair. Like this is an important meeting. Yes, I agree. Oh, well, God damn, wait, yeah. we're talking about masks. Let me go ask P if I can talk about this. I'll be back. Oh yeah, shit. Uh, what? I I didn't catch the end of your stream. What? What did DG's poll end up on? Because I'm still I'm not on Twitter still. I didn't see the poll. I I mean I don't remember. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm gonna make another Twitter eventually. I just gotta fucking. P says you yeah. can't. Ethan is fine. <laughs> what you talking about? Oh. <laughs> Just make sure you email him first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I caught a bit of your stream today, DJ. Sounds like a lot of dog shit, man. <laughs> Fuckers. We should we should devise a plan to at least see what metrics or or when that might be necessary and to plan for it. And what we've learned, particularly about this generation, is that is that there's got to be a real interest in that particular mission, that particular thing, not just the overall brand. And so that's why I think it'd be helpful. Uh, I want to ask you some questions, uh, General Glenn. Uh, wh what does it cost us to have a Marine Corps? You mean the overall? Yeah. It's, just ballpark. It's just over fifty billion a year, right? And 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 how much of that do you manage in your portfolio? It's um, just about what is that? I got, I'm trying to do math in my head here. When when you divide, it's about four or five billion a year. Okay. And, and yeah. Hold on. Can you pause for one second? The only thing that where I will like, because you got to be fair to these like generals and shit. Like they've probably like like they're old enough to have like seen fucking war and shit, man. So they're not like they're not like got the best education to begin with. You know, they probably joined the army because they didn't have no fucking other choice, and then you know became war heroes, and now they're in the role that they are. They've gotten no. smarter experience and shit. No, not in America's. So uh, to be a three star and a four star, you have to. You uh, there's you got to be clever. There's a requirement for sure. All right. Well, that's good. All right. Yeah. I wasn't yeah, sure if that was so, like an IQ level or some shit. Well, you so because you remember, like a three star and a four star, that's a political position. So uh, especially in in modern day situations 
but you you still are a marine you still are an armor in the army you know what i'm saying so yeah there um like uh west point you got the green castle red castle you know like uh the army corps of engineers there um because you got to remember like the army like we can't look strong while putin is taking back land that was taken from him during the nazi era in ukraine we can't have a, a powerful president when that's happening because because trump wouldn't allow it but there there ha so when certain contracts are over and you're playing in a geopolitical sphere where it's legitimate global warfare you you have to that's why like iran when they sent all of those missiles to iraq when those like in those bombs there was nothing in them it was just you know, like, it's funny like everything you say like basically sounds like fucking voltech well it is yeah it, <laughs> is, it is it's, it's the thing man that is not called voltech they called something else but it's basically fucking voltech it's called darpa <laughs> motherfucker. like shit. Uh, like man you gotta you geopolitics is like like look think oh about i fucking hate history. politics in general but i i don't mind watching some of this shit where like especially like this guy is charismatic as fuck like these people like they, he's literally versing a team of people i don't know why this old dude's here i think he's just there to copy the same hand gestures as thingy jay dollar wanted um uh oh, missed it wanted an excuse to pause on matt go, go with it hey man he is a fucking sexy looking dude man i mean he's not the sexiest what but you know for a billionaire billion a year okay and, and what if we doubled it like what you were your portfolio what if i gave you two dollars for every dollar you get now what would be like some stuff you could do um there's a there's a host of it's exciting, isn't it? Right? Investments in the people that, that yeah, immediately. You probably weren't expecting that question from me. It, it's not an offer I get very frequently. <laughs> right, but what's interesting well, it's not an offer, is it's hypothetical. It's like the offer we've made to Ukraine is actually more than the cost of the United States Marine Corps. In this supplemental that we are about to vote on, there's 60... All right, so think about it. So we got five branches really that are militaristic in the united states government it costs barely over 50 billion dollars a year for the marines alone and we're about to approve a package in ukraine that is the equivalent to 60 billion dollars which is more than uh yeah which is more than fucking feeding arming training and you know given stability for the marines families like that, th that's just throwing money to a foreign nation so what 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 is it like what is like i know like ukraine has a shit ton of gold they got an unimaginable amount of farmable land they have uh salt veins in their country that like that can compete with Hausstadt um, in Switzerland and stuff like that. Like, I, I get that. But, like, so if one package... See, if, if I was an American citizen, I would be like, why can't we just fucking do them like we did Afghanistan? Where we're going in there to liberate them, save them, but take everything. Yes, take... I, I, this doesn't, man. He won billion dollars for Ukraine, and it's about fifty billion dollars to have a Marine Corps. So, so we could double our investment in the Marine Corps, or we could send, we could vote for this supplemental. And I'm just going through it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt again. You remember in 2008 and 2009, they were they collapsed our economy really the housing economy so certain banks can gobble up all these houses 
the argument was over eight and nine. Well, dude, you know what's funny? They're doing that right now here in Western Australia. They're they're fucking destroying the housing economy so they can give these houses to fucking illegal immigrants. Yeah, and I'm not joking. They 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 come over on boats. Yeah, they do. So in 2008, if if that crisis required an eight or nine billion dollar check, we have given to Ukraine like twenty or thirty or forty fold the amount than the dramatization that happened in 2008 and 2009. And for what, what do you get back from it? It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't fucking... Yeah, that's why you, you get that thing back. Like, it's just throwing money out the fucking front door. Well, what it feels like is 2008 was just a... Um, a... Uh, uh, emphasis on the push that a large amount of money is about it's about to be uh, siphoned out of your country like you know what i mean like it was setting up the united like all the people in the united states like, it's, it's, condition, oh. it's conditioning you it's conditioning you grooming you for what's to come it's like what i said about like the covid lockdowns so in 2008 2009 we're like uh lamenting about eight or nine billion dollars and then in 2024 one aid package of over over 15 aid packages is 60 billion like what the like like if you if you if it doesn't it's monumental where that's a lot of money do you know how much money have you ever like looked on the internet like at half a billion dollars have you ever looked at that and so I, if a half a billion dollars can fill like a five or ten thousand square foot building and we're giving 60 billion dollars in one aid package of numerous like it doesn't it's yeah, no, see, I'm, I'm a firm believer. I, I've got no problem with, like, countries helping other countries that aren't their own. But what I do believe in, you help, help your people, your country, your people first. Anthony, I agree. I would say more. I'm still waiting on Pete's answer if I could actually comment on this. <laughs> What's up, DJ? How you doing? What What did the poll end up on? I, I think I seen it ended up on 51. You should leave. Uh, yeah, so I, I left the Comics Gate community room. Yep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the people uh, that, that, that came out of left field, didn't it, man? Like, did you know this was coming, or was it just like you woke up to it and just boom? It, it was like bubbling here and there, but I thought like there was been there was like a a long lull, I should say. Uh, and I I, I don't think I've better. ever heard you use the F stain word before. Like today, while I was listening to it, like I was listening to it while I was playing some Conan uh, before I was going to jump in like Discord, wait for a mate. And I'm like, he's like, oh, he said the F stage. <laughs> I'm like, damn, he's pissed. Yeah, well, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, I was trying to think. I'm like, have I ever heard him say fucking, you know, bundle of sticks before? I'm like, maybe when he's been fighting with Testify back in the day. But yeah, yeah I don't think so. It, 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 uh, it's rare when I do. I have used Ooh. it before, but it's very, very rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. That's, well, it's, you know, like, that's how you know someone's generally angry that is a streamer because, like, um, even I try not to use that word anymore because I know the algorithm will fucking pick it up and hit, like, it, it doesn't even take a person hitting the channel. Like, if the algorithm thing picks up on someone saying that, like, boom, you get the fucking this isn't safe yeah I, I i'm i'm looking for a review we'll see if i if i pass the muster 
So, but yeah, well, you like, usually put yours behind um, the membership anyway, don't you? Not the Slumlord ones, no. Oh, just no? just right. the just the Toke Times and um, and the. Times. Um, that Neutral probably grounds. explains why I haven't seen a fucking tote time in a long fucking time. Super Jewish agent, yes. Yeah. Hiram Jewish. Yeah. He had a good uh he had a good agent, bro. Does yeah. anyone know about the apps? KSS says that the K the Kiwi Farms uh, called them a uh, female used a porn actress, but then I saw a, a screenshot, and they said that I said that about KSS. Someone on Kiwi oh, wait, said KS that. Was I, a porn. Yeah, wait, I've heard that about KS as well now. Like, I can't remember who said that to me, but I was on a fucking stream or in a Discord, and someone's like, you know KS is like a fucking former porn actress? I'm like, wait, KS is like a fucking chick? What the fuck? I thought it was a dude. Yeah, you know, it is a dude. <laughs> it always weirds me out how many, like, weird rumors gets made up about people. Like, they don't, don't even scream. They're just in the fucking chat. But this was this was literally a, a weird rumor about me and K. Like, not only was it about KSS being a washed-up porn actress, but that I was the one going around saying I was the wash, that he was the washed-up porn actress. <laughs> What? I don't remember if that was the case that I heard, but I did hear about the porn actress part. You yeah, are. yeah, I, 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 I'd have to look. Uh, I don't know who who sent me that. Um, it was somebody who's not on Twitter. They well, I think me. what I think what I said was I was like, well, do you have a link because I want to get checked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd have to like go through my emails. Is it hot or, or is, is it hot or is it like a Preston Poulter video where you don't want to watch? <laughs> right. I'd have to. Yeah, I'd have there's to. Stuff here that is. Sorry, Jen, we no, could vote for the supplemental, and I'm just going Sorry, through Jen. it. And there's stuff here that is really insulting. The 300 million for the anti-narcotics efforts in Ukraine. So, so we're about to proceed onto a bill that does nothing to protect Americans from the narcos in Mexico and the Northern Triangle and in this country. But we got 300 million to go fight the narcos in Ukraine. And it doesn't end there. 250 million for the International Development Association. Yeah. I did not know that what that was. He's got all his receipts lined up. Turns yeah. I'm sorry, I was just saying, like, he's got all his receipts lined up. He's, like, really good at this shit. <laughs> that was, but I knew it probably wasn't good. Turns out it's an arm of the World Bank. We, we are $34 trillion in debt. We are on a glide path to $50 trillion in debt. And we are borrowing money from China to give it to the World Bank. <laughs> And then I looked at, at where this money got dispersed, and it's places like Niger. Niger, where we have Air Force and we have Army service members who are not getting their medicine, who are not able to get their troop rotations, who are not able That's to get fun. their mail, because there are not diplomatic overflights allowed so that we can care for our own service members. So in a bit, we will hear many of our colleagues stand up and talk about how important it is to stand with our allies. But not even all this money's going to our allies. Some of it is potentially being recycled through globalist. Dude, it ain't even going to your own, your own fucking arms forces. No, that's the Whoa. part that's the most fucked up. You, so. If I was in the military, I would be doing what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a. So I don't know who this guy is, but it says, if it makes you feel any better, that KSS Jenny is, according to Dark Gift Comics, a female who is used up ex-porn actress. <laughs> Kids, you're What's the name again? What's that Fleet person's name again that said it? Fleetwood? Fleetwood. Oh. 
No, I know that. I would recognize a name like that because of Fleetwood Mac. I've I've never I've never said this. <laughs> But that's fucking hilarious, if you ask me. <laughs> that is kind of funny. Because the funny thing is, you're not that funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> Say that bluff, brother. <laughs> oh, shit. So, like, I'd be, I'd like, you're like, I would go, I'd just go into court with you and be like, no, no, Your Honor, I, I was not there when he said it or if he said it, but I know for a fact that he could not say that. How, you sir? He's not that fucking funny. <laughs> oh, it's too, too much. I, I just love, this is why, this is why my, my Kiwi Farms video is my highest watched video. And it has so many angry Kiwi farmers in the comments. <laughs> I don't even think I've seen your Kiwi farmers video. Is that neat? No, it's old, man. That's old. Testify used to be like, you're going to get... around with Kiwi farms. I've never even really looked at it. I know people have talked about me on Kiwi farms in the past. But I'm like, why do I care about a fucking bunch of fucking fat 40 year old old virgin men that live in their mother's fucking basement that think that they're fucking online warriors? I'm like, dude, press me on Gears of War. I'll fucking rape your ass. Yeah, I, I get I get sent screenshots from there every now and then. Um the only time Yeah, I same, went, yeah, same. Yeah, I'd get I, I would get the same or I'd get um links to go read it and then I'd be like, No, send me screenshots because I never understood how the threads worked on that shit. It's like because I didn't use it, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's like, I'm like it's wow. very old school, yeah. It's like you have to literally yeah. just click through every page. Um, yeah, and, I, and then I didn't have an account, and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't even care. I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> yeah. What's up, Ray? How you doing, bro? What's yeah, up, the, Ray? The last time I think I've actually been to the site since I did my video three years ago or four years ago. It had to be four I've years. never been to the site. Um, was when uh, Fla Flash sent me a link to uh, the... Um, Veto th thread, and I, I did read the veto thread. That was maybe uh, a veto, veto, veto. That's the guy that um is. Can I you say this, Rizzy? Uh Defender of well, not really defender. Wants to help people with fucked up thoughts about children. Is that the same person I'm thinking of? Yes, the non-offending ones, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to help the non-offending ones. Yeah. Which, so honestly, like, non-offending just means you're not big. I haven't been in Hollywood like that. Like, I'm a professional gamer. I do things, like, uh, on that, on a weird level, like Okay. Um, Wait, Jay Dollar. Level like that, but I'm not in. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I might have spoke over because I'm a rude fucking guest host. Um, why are we watching this, you guys? Who are they? Let, let's find out. In the game. So to me, I don't understand. Like, I, to me, it seems in a lot of our community, we, we it appears to be like, if just if you're part of Hollywood, you're in it. And I know, honestly, like I do understand you, like you can have, you can be a premiere, you can just show up, you can have connections and have nothing to do about selling out or anything. I get that. But I do also understand, and I've come to, you know, know that it, you get to a certain level of hierarchy, if you will, in Hollywood, and you're starting to be promoted more and more. So I just have a question. How could you get on somewhere like SNL? How can you do a movie like with David Chappelle and not be in the game? That's the part that I don't get. Okay. Um, first of all, the lead up. Did this guy get beat up crazy. before? What? The fucking interview? Like, did this guy get beat up before the interview? What's up with his eyes? He's a heavy, heavy drinker. He probably drinks a lot of vodka. Oh, my ninja. All right. Respect. Yeah, when you when you get eyes like that, bro, you you drink from sun up to sundown. I've never seen eyes like that, man. And I'm on a lot of heavy fucking drinkers, but wow. All right, he's still alive. 
must do it in moderation. I start as a stand-up comedian. Sure. I control my destination. I'm doing stand-up comedy. Thanks. The stand-up comedy led to, you know, then you got to get an agent, a manager, and all this stuff. Right. Um, right. And I don't know what they are, you know, handlers, whatever you want to call them. Sure. But they're there. So that led to, I had some shows in the works. Me and Dave Chappelle had a show uh, that they, that they moved us into where we were going to be on uh, home improvement. We were on the show home improvement with Tim Allen, and then we were going to spin off and it was going to be me and Dave Chappelle. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Pause the pause. Bullshit. Yeah. Home improvement was a show when I was a fucking kid. There's no fucking way that that happened. Jim Brewer did the uh, the weed show, the weed movie with um, Dave Chappelle. Yeah, but that's not Tim Burton like Home Improvement. Wait, what was it, Tim Burton? Tim Allen. I seen that show when I was a kid. It had that fucking neighbor you'd never seen his face. He'd he'd pop his head up over the gate and shit. Right. What about? Am I thinking something like really fucking different? Sorry, man. I swear. He's he's swear I called I hard and I'm gonna eat myself. I'm no, I I'm a computer. We were gonna be on uh, home improvement. We were on the show Home Improvement with Tim Allen, and then we were gonna spin off, and it was gonna be me and Dave Chappelle in this really corny show called Buddies. He's black and I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I'm a computer guy. And I talk this. And, uh, my mother-in-law is really racist. Hey, Dave, you ate chicken today? Wow. Right. It's right. Never, wow. So, and so um, I got fired from it. Mm-hmm. And this is part of what I was talking about, the spirituality. Right. I knew the minute I got that show, I was so captivated by the Hollywood scene mm-hmm. because this is what you want. Right. This is what you, this is what, right. this is what you want to be. There's so-and-so. Oh, my God. And then when you come to town and you're the new cat, and I was young, me and Dave were young, and now they're like, you're the, you're the, every, you, you're meeting people you never knew was possible meeting. And I knew right out of the gate, my marriage, we, were, we weren't married long, but I to me, that was a whole God thing. Everything's a God thing in my, uh, how I see Good. it. Good. Awesome. And, I love that. Yeah. And I knew I was in serious trouble. And I, and I talked to guys that, God, I am not – my marriage is not going to last. Like, I need you somehow. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. But I – I need to be saved and I need to I need you to like cut this bitch's brakes so she drives in off the cliff. <laughs> you save our marriage somehow. And I didn't do anything, thank God, but I was there. Right. I was right on the yeah. cliff. I already committed. I already committed. I'll do a dual life, just like they all do. Oh, this guy's hitting this one and that one and that one, and and this one does that, but at home he has this little and um Dude, I think it was a day later I got fired from the show. And to this day, no one knows. No one really gave an explanation. And I can honestly say, as as at that time, a hard people like your commercials are on the air. <laughs> like you've already filled the episode. What do you like? People will recognize me from the commercials. Right. We were day. De- I flew my friends out so we could be there for the debut. And when you're on the cover of Hollywood Reporter, blah, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, pulled out from under you out of nowhere on my it? life. I just realized the perfect fucking character this guy could play. A clone version of Luke Skywalker and Emperor Palpatine. He's got the fucking bags. He's got the gay-ass Luke Skywalker fucking face. Boom. This is Luke Skywalker Palpatine, ladies and gentlemen. Better casting than fucking Ray. So this is just basically a male Ray, right? Because isn't Ray just like the daughter of Yeah, the yeah, exactly. But but this guy looks like 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 but like hear me out. Like he takes a bit of his DNA, mixes it with the Skywalker's DNA oh, and man. the Palpatine DNA. And then we get this guy. 
Gotcha. Yes. So this, uh, this my is like life. As God is my witness, the first thought I had was, "Wow, I did, I thank you. I didn't see it like that. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. But wow, I was humbled. You know, there was no." Hey, I didn't ask to be fired. He was like, just like lightning powers fired. coming out of his hand just then. <laughs> right. Suck it, Jay. I keep derailing him, but this guy is literally. Yeah. And this guy's just a cheap version of fucking choke out. Fuck the other guy. I was just going to say, who's the uh, the dollar store in Vanilla Ice? He's some big YouTuber. <laughs> I was even like, like he's like he reminded me of Choke Out. You know how Choke Out's always in like this like trashy couch, <laughs> laying yeah, back. He, he does like kick back on the couch though. I, I, yeah. I think that's uh, cool. Like, like Choke Out just doesn't give a fuck. He's just like whatever. Oh no, I honestly, I, I don't, I don't like Choke Out, and I don't hate him either. Got no feelings for him, positive or ill. Um, uh, but level, when I seen yeah. this little dumb, like he, he's like a cheap version of choke out. Like you got no ink. You'd probably cry if someone fucking gave you a needle, <laughs> you know, you're a little bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, and then, and then, then go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. And then once, once SNL came, I could not believe the stars that would come in hmm. and what the public had no clue. It, that, that, that is the first time I saw where you have the public persona of all your favorite stars. All your favorite. I kind of oh. want to like this guy because he sounds cool, but at the same time, he sounds like he's just like a jilted ex that's been kicked out of a group. And um, he's like, oh, oh, yeah, look, they took away my, my deals and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, maybe it's just because they realized you weren't good enough. I don't know. No, nah, Jim Brewer is bigger now than he's ever been. Oh, I, look, look, Sam, I'm, I'm saying I don't know who this guy is. I, I'm just saying, like, he is somewhat entertaining. I want to be on his side, but this video isn't really a good fucking one to try to, like, well, well, this is this is a part of a hour and a half interview, and I'm just sh just showing a clip from that. Clip of it, yeah, fifteen about, minutes. He talks about Dave Chappelle here in a little bit, and I want to get your opinion on Dave Chappelle. Well, I've not watched any of his stand up. Well, he 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 came. Him and Dave Chappelle were like mano a mano. Like they were like. I've heard Dave Chappelle's stand up is pretty good. I remember it blew up the internet a couple of years ago. And I, the only reason I haven't watched it is I forgot what fucking it was called. Right, right, right. Oh, my God. Is this one's the greatest and that one's the greatest and this one's the greatest. This one. And then you're, you see behind the curtain. Right. And you're like, oh, wow. This is. This is nothing how I was brought up. This is not how I grew up. This is not. Whoa, morals are just right. thrown out the window. Boom, chuck that. You see, this is why I like the guy. The yeah. Like, like, like he says something, it takes away something that I like about him. And then he says something like this. And I'm like, yeah, man, you, you've always got to fucking remember the morals that you fucking, you know, your parents fucking taught you growing up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if that was good ones. one can get better than the other and they'll do anything to get better and then and then not only that what i saw was nobody cares cuz there's a billion star there's a billion people they're going to put to the forefront to become a star and i watch it nice. over and over and i go oh i hope this one's gonna be all right they got this one it's only a matter of time before we see something with this one and i saw how they become drug addicts and no one, no one cares. Just get the job done. Let us get our money. And we don't care if you kill yourself. Thanks. We don't care if you owe to us. We don't care. I collected my 10. He collected his 20. He collected his. Oh, Jim Brewer does an amazing um, ACDC impression. 
Have you ever heard him sing ACDC songs? Yeah, I think I have. I think I have, yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't. I've, been... oh, I've watched him over the years. <laughs> yeah, he's he really great. He's um... really crazy. He's outlandish. And he's no, I can good. say that, man. You know, honestly, I can say a little bit of myself in this guy. Uh, especially like when the fact that he's like, no one cares. Just go kill yourself already. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is shit. I wake up the next day like, yeah, Rosie, you said this shit. I'm like, ah, well, maybe they should. Yeah. He, we don't care. I collected my 10. He collected his 20. He collected yep. his like, billion dollars. Yep. And, and, and that was one of the most I will use the word, and I try not to cry, traumatizing things I ever witnessed in my human existence. It was traumatizing. And that's when I, that's when I started seeing like, well. And imagine, Jim, you, you started at the age you did. Imagine these people that started right, in and in Disney at Sorry. age five, six. Seven. I understand. Sorry, I, I'm going to keep. I, I, I don't mean to be an asshole, Jay Dollar, but I understand why you're watching that guy now. But why the fuck is this cocksucker there? Well, he bring uh, like, Jim Brewer does interviews. He has a podcast and he interviews. So is this guy relevant or is he just like a guest host? Like kind of how like um you know did you I don't know you ever watched the troll show but Keanu would have like guest people come on. Is he just a guest? Yeah, he has like a million million followers on YouTube. Oh, he's a millionaire too. This guy's a fucking millionaire and he dresses. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's actually I've never heard about him until this interview so and i probably won't ever i don't know and what i would see sasha is the children that would come into snl as just extras yeah and their parents what parents yeah <laughs> but they but i but i see it their parents but even our society Makes you think that's the li that right. is where you want to be, yeah. and here's my child. Uh, I I don't care if I'm not around them. Facts. I don't. Yeah, sure, put the take their shirt off, yeah. put them in a sexy outfit, Facts. give them whatever drugs they need to learn the lines, so I could be part of this. Exactly, I'm now important. Exactly, and that was horrifying to witness, and and just see what my own two eye the little kid getting groomed and his hair's cut a little and the little kid talking and speaking a certain way so he could be it was bro it was so that was as and i gotta say dave Chappelle, the dave Chappelle i knew right um he was an incredible Mentor. All right, before we get into that, because we're going to go into a different thing, I just want to pause it one last time. One last time, Jay Dollar. I just want to say to both of you and in the chat, do you guys remember, like, having to know all this shit about fucking pedophiles, like, growing up? I don't remember, like, like my mom, her friends, like, always talking about, oh, this person's a pedophile, that person's a pedophile, everyone's a pedophile, da 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 And it's getting to the point where everyone's a pedophile. It's getting to the point where, like, if everyone's a Nazi, now it's not, like, an insult anymore. And that's why I'm with you, DG, man, where you don't find pedophile jokes fucking funny because, honestly, that's why, like, once I fucking sobered up after that stupid fucking binge thing where I said the shit about you and Dylan, I publicly apologized to you guys because, was, especially because of the Vic shit that dropped, right? Um, and I'm like, all right, that that's it's it's not even fucking funny. But right. I'm saying that like this was never like we, we never had to worry about these fucking things that much. But you and did. which we always should. But let, let me no, give you, you an do. example. Let me give you an example, Risey. The people who created Nickelodeon, that woman, 
her husband was like one of the best friends. Oh, I already, yeah, I already know all that, brother. Yeah, I already but, know all but, that. Uh, but, right, no, what Ryzen's thing- saying is, is we that wasn't like widespread information back when we were younger. Yeah, when we were younger, like 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 my generation, your generation. I think I'm younger than you guys. Um, I'm not sure with you, um, J Dollar, but. I know I'm younger than you, DJ. It doesn't matter about the age, though. But the fact is, is that like, like I feel like my generation might have been the last one that didn't fucking have to grow up with these grooming terms and shit like that. It was the Justin Bieber generation, um, and then they also started to groom people in into thinking that they weren't the sex that they were as well. Um, well, you gotta remember, Risey, like Hollywood was created by the mafia. Like, so there was well, the never. Devil. There was never. It wasn't the mafia? It was the devil. Yeah, well, you can call it the devil, but like, there was never a good intention. You know what I mean? So no, no, no. no but then my point is, veneer. well, they put a veneer. I'm not saying that. No, see. Dude, I, I condemn anyone that wants to work in Hollywood. Like, you're basically giving up your soul for basically nothing in return except for a, a world and a life full of heartache because the people that are chanting your names and carrying them. Anyway, sorry, gerbilly. I'm on the box again. My bad. No, it's it's fine. It's fine. Like, what, like we've always been tricked. We, we, yeah, uh, and that's what I'm just saying. It's just, I have a very bad feeling that, like, if if we start calling pe- everyone pedophile that we don't like, then the word's not going to mean anything just because, right. like, how, like, everyone started calling everyone Nazi. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like, at that point, like, now, now I kind of use that term as a thing of pride. Like, I know I'm not a Nazi, but I'm like, I'm the person that everyone calls a fucking Nazi online. So, bitch, I don't give a fuck what you say about me. But now we're getting to the level where the last, the last worst thing you could call someone is a fucking pedophile. And if we start to normalize that, and I know I'm saying the exact same things that Wiggles talked about, but... If we normalize that shit, like now, now we have literally lost our moral backbone and the bar of like how far shit can get worse. Like there, there is nothing worse than harming a fucking child. I want to point out that statistically there are more slaves today than in, in human history. And every day the amount of slave number increases. So, like, this idea that there is, like, a, a modern world that's civilized is, is a false premise. The whole idea is false. So, the veneer that's been put over everyone, right. especially individuals who like music, movies, poems, the ritzy life and all that, that... that Anything that, entertainment is corrupted. Do what? Said anything that's entertainment is created by a, yeah. a person that's a creator, so, and like, it's corrupted. But but you have you have to like societally over time when there's uh, an innumerable amount of scenarios that make it impossible to keep secret anymore. There has to be a cleansing, like. So there, this is that era. Oh, I do always love the idea of the cleansing. Yes. Well, this is that era that Clean. we live in where we have to face these motherfuckers. And they will whitewash Nazis. They will whitewash pedophiles and all that. But Yeah, the, well, that's the thing. I'm like, if you make the word pedophile normal, it, 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 like, when there's an actual pedophile, no one's going to care. Hey, what's up, brother? Well, a lot of these people are going to... So the whole thing with Puff Daddy, just to give him an example of what's going on. Um, Everyone known for a long time that Puff Daddy has been working with the FBI. And now we have problems in our political sphere that makes what Puff Daddy is doing... Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Jay Dollar, my brother just just told me something really fucking important. Say say this again. 
in the most recent DSM-5, which is the mental health, like, guide book where all the mental Ill, mental health issues are listed and, like, like autism, ADHD, schizophrenia, they accidentally put pedophilia in there. Yeah. And then it was removed, like, a couple months later or, like, a... Uh, Revisited it and like, oh no, that was an oversight. That shouldn't be in there. But like, some motherfucker yeah, put it in there. That happened recently. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah, can say so there you go. The next one comes around that they will include it. Exactly because they're trying to say that it's a mental disorder. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't. That means you're a freak that needs yeah. a fucking either a bit of lead between their eyes or a fucking arrow. Yeah. It's putting it lightly. So, yeah. Well, do you do you know in the bow and arrow game what it is to miss a target? What it's called? I don't know. What do you in a in a bow and arrow competition when you miss a target? What is it called? I've never gone to a bow and arrow. Cheers again, brother. It's called. Um, I never went to a bow and arrow competition. You, know, you want to know what it's called? No, it's I do want to know what it's called. It's called a sin. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, is it like if you if you think about it, like from an etymology perspective? So, mentor and human being to be around. Because when when we started filming Half Baked, what I know, what I learned more was not 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 the movie and all that. That's nothing. The the long conversations and deep spiritual who controls the world. Why are, why are agents in the industry called agents? Right. And why are they all from a certain <laughs> descent? Why why are they all Jews? God, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well. You fucking man. I I mean honestly I am not Jewish. One of my relatives was Jewish. One of my grandparents that my nanny nana grandmother married was Jewish, but can't get nothing against the fucking Jews. What's up, Java baby? They are Jewish though. And there's nothing wrong. I just there were just questions like, huh, that is interesting. Why do they all? Huh? Yeah. And, it's all white male bravado. And, Ain't no Jew a white guy. That guy is Correct. very so, anti-white because that's the third time I've heard him say something fucking anti-white. And that guy looks whiter than anyone. Not this guy on the camera, but the fucking guy that's like sitting there like he's fucking choking. Fuck that little bitch. White male bravado. Fuck you. Fuck and you and your Nickelodeon fucking, fucking pedophile. Correct. And so that is when it really started. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I still struggled with it um, for years. Like, I still kind of, when I finally let go is after probably my, um, the birth of my second child. I was like, I really don't. This is, my kids are not going to, my kids are not going to be around forever. I'm not going to be able to be a dad to a younger I child went to piss. forever. You're old. Yeah. He's a father your whole life, but that that was the um, that was the real eye opener. And do you? Get but I don't shit on the toilet. toilet. I should realize I should have just clarified yeah, that. No, I don't shit on the toilet. <laughs> Sorry. Look, look, look. Here we go. He's 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 the whitest black guy ever. <laughs> Not you, checkpoint. Fuck it, the Nickelodeon guy. My aunt is Jewish. She locked my grandma in the attic until <laughs> she died. And sold her house without her permission or from controlling her estate and bills. Wow. Or, or a, a third party in any shape, way, or form to not say or say or anything? No. The, the only... The only like I've learned to tip tap, uh, tap dance around YouTube, right? Which I really think you should hit many, many, many platforms, right? Especially right here. <laughs> um, 
So, and the reason I say that is because they it, they allow it all. They allow it all. They've been great to me, but they're not allowing everything. No, they're not going to allow. They're not going to allow. So when I say have I been pressured? Not at all. I don't live by anyone's standard. Rising seats while he pays confirmed. Hey, man, I said that? I did. I was in the bathroom. This was. Damn it. Fuck you, Java. I don't. Right. It's just. And then. Who are you? And then what about David Chappelle? You say that's not the same person that you used to know. So do you, I mean, do you want to get, I don't. And then what about David Chappelle? You say that's not the same person that you used to know. So do you, I mean, do you want to get, I don't mind getting into it. Do you think it's a, it's a, some MK ultra celebrity playing his role? Do you think there's something deeper there? Fuck, I hate wrong? this guy. Like, I, I mean, dude, it's, it's clearly not the same person. I mean, honestly, you know what? I want to see that guy in Paul Walker's car. You know, not in like Fast and Furious, but you know, you know, in the other version, the Rizy yeah. version of Fast and the Furious, the real life version, the Rizy Rizy rides. You ride with Rizy tonight, boy. It's it's, <laughs> it's fucking Nickelodeon. I almost feel like I'll, I'll just say this: this is all I know. This is all I know. This is the God's honest truth. This is all I know. I know that Dave um, that when Dave Dave was visited and that's that's up for him to tell that story. And that was my first real, like, are you, what do you mean you were visited? And nobody talks about that. Everyone thinks he just well, ran away dead. to Africa and. Huh? I said, this guy's going to be dead in a year or two, you fucking <laughs> idiot. Well. You know, the man was offered $50 million and he walked Away. He came back with seven Netflix, uh, seven Netflix series, and he's promoting. He just had another. He just had another person on Netflix that uh, I forget his name. Uh, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, he just had a new Netflix, and it was sponsored by Dave. That means David Chappelle sponsored the last three of these comedians that I've seen on Netflix. So someone who walked away from a deal on Oprah show, which I, I'm all about, all of that, but then comes back and gets all of this. That's a different person. I can't, I... You say, who visited Dave? You know, what's so funny is uh, Jack uh, Brewer here just did an interview with Roseanne. And um, Roseanne has like, because Roseanne's Jewish and uh, the guy she has that runs our show with her is Jewish. And the Jewish dude asked Brewer who were the ones who... Um, talk to Dave Chappelle and you can see like this uh, you could you could see a body language a body language that signaled a thought but the thought didn't match what came out and uh, well really yeah no the thought like it like for years of training and like it was like no you're not going to say what you're thinking you're going to say what you programmed to say and Roseanne said he can't he can't say who he spoke to like this was in the interview so and then roseanne just having her little glass of yeah, Chardonnay or whatever. so they could say i mean they i mean technically you probably can't because that would be legal well, dude, all right, let's let's put it this way all right you you're working for hollywood next thing you know a fucking demon rocks into your house you know, a bunch of fucking like demons crawling through the walls. There's eyes and shit. Shit's about to look like Jujutsu Kai's in the anime, baby. It's getting really fucking freaky in here. And they're like, now bow to us, you peasant. I mean, I'd like to say that like I've got a fucking long, fucking hard spiritual fucking soul in me that I'd be like, yo, fuck you, say it, and I'm not gonna do it. But I'm like, dude, that's some creepy ass shit. And then if they fucking grab my cat. Like, all bets are off. I'm like, ah, right, fine, 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 fuck you. Putting the class down. 
I got to work. I will work for you. I can't. And I can't. And then last uh, thing, and then one more thing I want to add from the guy, from the person that I remember watching. Uh, what was what was that David Chappelle show? And um, I remember him. I remember honestly an actual quote he said. I'll oh, paraphrase. Is that? And he was joking like he always does. And he was in this one. It was Skinny David, and he was saying that the government from the same government that engineered crack and HIV. This is David Chappelle who was saying that. How long ago? I was probably. God, 15, 16, what? 17 years What's ago. Was HIV ever know. actually I mean, engineered? Absolutely, HIV was engineered. Uh, it was? All right. I had always heard rumors about it. I wasn't sure if it was no, true. Okay. I just thought it was a bunch of dirty people had fucking too much sex. No, no, no. The, the patents exist. It's completely engineered. So but that's yeah, like... That's uh, fucking... It's so funny because it caused such a drama in the in like the 90s you know what i mean but like the way they well you're basically it. hiv just meant you had like aids and which they kind of like the same but different still yeah. fucked up we still don't want to have sex with someone with us yeah the Not my exist for hiv and its creation it's like it's, it's hilarious at this point to to the person that he is now that's 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 why i ask man I, I, that's the part of that's the that's the that was the part that made me weary to go on here. Like I just I, I just I like I don't trust nobody at no time because I know what Hollywood has done. I know what they do, and like and it, it's everything you're confirming, you know. And that's the reason why I, I don't I like this guy. And shadow banned and censored the way that I am is because I just I don't know. You must know Tupac. I'm just like him. I got a big voice. I got a big. I got a loud mouth, and I don't I don't care. You can kill me right now. You can say, look, you can't see your kids ever again. You're the whitest black guy I know. No, I'm, I'm, I don't know Tupac. Oh, shit. I, uh, you know, of, Tupac. He was on, I think, of course, I, that's what I, I met him on. That's SNL. what I know. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Um, with the Dave thing, I'd be a blatant liar. If I were to say a hundred percent, that's him. Okay, perfect. Because our commu our communication ended. Hmm. Um, and when I say our communicate, he stopped communicating with me. At at a at a uh, when he came back. When I say came back, I'm not talking about from Africa because the first thing he did was go on Oprah, which I find fascinating. Um. And I highly suggest people really watch that interview intently. Um, and I sobbed. I fucking sobbed. Because I don't... I hope it's him. Um, but I will say when he came back bigger... Yep. Um, and I thought, all right, maybe he did steroids. Maybe he worked out like crazy. Um, I know he was very self-conscious. I get where he's going. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it, he's been replaced. Um, the same with, you know, my wife here in my icon picture. I don't know if anyone noticed. That's uh, Taylor Swift. Um, we're actually collaborating a comic book at the moment. Um, it's about an isekai, uh, Western styled where these two, uh, romantic people, uh, die constantly from heartache and Hollywood backstabbing and CG backstabbing. And then we find each other in a fantasy world and, you know, make sweet, sweet little babies. The slice of life anime, uh, manga. So, what do you think about cloning? Now, was that his name? Is that whose name? The guy just then that was talking the most, no, not I'm the fucking. You, what I'm asking you is, what do you think about cloning? Like the actual. Um, oh, cloning. Product? Oh, uh, well, it depends what you mean. Like, I, do I believe that um, there is great ideas in harvesting organs of cloning, but where do I feel like whether or not they have a soul? Is that what you're asking? 
That's a like, good question. Like, is it okay to kill a clone to harvest their organs? So you're okay with clones? No, I no. I'm just saying. I'm like, I'm asking you the question. What you're asking me? Because like, asking me what level of like, what am I? What 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 level of cloning am I okay with? Right, Anthony. Because some, some some cloning, I think, would be okay for the benefit of society and humanity, but at the same time, inhumane. <sighs> Depend right, Anthony. What do you think about cloning? Cloning in general. Do you have a religious emotional feel? Do you have a, a I think secular feel? Do you have uh, cloning uh, organs should be fine. Cloning an actual yeah, that's what I was saying. Person, yeah, I think that might be taking things a little too far because I mean, yeah, that, that's be like the part where I'm like, because have you ever seen Rise the movie The Rise Island? Right, shut up. Ahead, but that, that that was the that was the whole thing about cloning organs, the movie The Island. But like you had to kill the person, but they still had self consciousness. Anthony, yeah. what was your? What were you going to say? Like 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 uh, does you know is this it, does does it go the route of sci fi where like you clone the person and they have your actual memories? Conscious. Or yeah, or is it like a fresh slate? Uh, so it's basically a different person just with the same DNA. That gets a little funky too. You know what I mean? Oh, what if they clone? Yeah, you, like now, on. now you're just killing a brand new person. Risey, hold on, hold on. So what if they clone? Uh, so their ability to clone someone, and when they clone them, they create their own new conscience. They, a soul is created. Outside. Yeah, that's so now you're committing murder. Yeah, that, that's the that part that? where I'm like, yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's hard because, like in the Boys of Brazil, which is a film from 1970s, and I'll be honest with you, um, like panda bears. You've seen the 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 nonsense going on with panda bears recently, right? Like before the late 1800s, early 1900s, there's no recorded history in any capacity of panda bears. No, I feel like we proved this wrong. I feel like we we found historical records of panda bears. God, it kind of sounds like fucking Mike Miller talking about fucking unicorns in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, in that film... A Jewish dude hunts down a company that makes clones of Hitler. But inside of that film, The Boys to Brazil, they make blatantly clear the ease of which it is to reproduce someone who has, a, 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 who has DNA. You can take DNA and put it into an infertile egg after you've eradicated the dna in there and you can supplement new dna in there which through if, if you're using the language of science is a clone so you you have yeah. the epstein dude who is the french guy from uh norway or whatever he he was doing the same thing he was taking young black girls between the age of 14 and I think like 19 or 18 or whatever, when they're, they're most fertile, harvesting the clone genetics between there and then, and then taking the blood, the ketones from, from the children that they clone to. That's why he looked so young when he was so old because he was taking DNA ketones from cloned, from cloned him to like so where do you draw a line at that ezra lieberman that's the honor yes what a great movie it was such a great movie well, i think your client is like if you're gonna kill them is bad i mean kill, killing conscious life is usually bad but here's the thing it depends like if i'm like um let's say i'm cleric or or, or thrawn 
from the Empire in Star Wars. Um, will I will I fucking give a second thought to the like countless lives that like and souls that I've like sent into malicious war to die and perish for the in the name of the Empire? No, no, I'll sleep like a fucking baby. The only nights I won't sleep like a baby is if that those stupid little cunts didn't actually fulfill the mission. So Dark Shadow said everyone is made up of DNA. There's theories of using the CRISPR tech. Well, what's so interesting is in the in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they already had the ability to 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 mix DNA. So it's not it's it's not within the cuz you you've seen the pictures of them growing cows and sheep inside of a ba- inside of a plastic bag from an embryonic state so it's not it's not with it it's not without like you all you got to do is fertilize the egg it's not magic it's nothing you're not doing anything cyan you're not doing anything magical all you do is take the dna out of out of an egg and and you fertilize it with the DNA of, of what you're trying to copy. And you had, uh, what is it? Uh, Tigard, Ligard, whatever his name is, that guy who was like the Northern version of Epstein bragging about doing this. So, so I, I don't know. I find, I, I find it fast. Like you're, you're taking an exact, uh, DNA replica of yourself, but the person that's being born ha- has a conscience to itself because it's it's itself, it's its own person. And you're you're I don't know, panda bear. Uh, so, uh, what, <clears throat> yeah, the, the panda bear thing. <clears throat> uh, Empress Dowager Bo was buried with a panda skull. She was the Empress of China uh, from 157 to nine. Be um, 157 of 155 BC. Is it genetically? Is it genetic yes. proof that it's a panda? Yes. Um, let me see what else. Uh, the grandson of Emperor Cao Zhang is said to have given Japan two pandas and a sheet of panda skin as a sign of goodwill. Um. Pandas were rarely thought to have medical uses. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like um, in vitro fertilization is a form of cloning. But in vitro fertilization, you do not take away the DNA of the egg that you're fertilizing, which is cloning. Right. Like, do you, do you, it's, it's very simple, but the process clearly is, is difficult. Like... Yeah. You and I don't have the capability of uh, getting right. rid of the DNA <laughs> of an egg of a woman that you t- took up an egg that can be fertilized. It's fascinating. It's absolutely. F- I find like I'm I'm not a chimera dude, but I am totally okay with DARPA doing everything. Like <laughs> everything. Like I don't care. Uh, during the reign of the Yangi Emperor in the early 15th century, his relative from, can't pronounce that, sent him a captured Zoyu, and another Zoyu was sighted in Shardong. Zoyu is a legendary righteous animal, which similarly to a, I don't know how to pronounce that, only appears during the rule of benevolent, blah, 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 basically a panda. Interesting, bro. Now, Western discovery, it, it falls more aligned with what you were talking about. Yeah, the Jesuits, uh, of course, found the, the panda. The, the, the we- Western discovery. The first uh, Western, the, the West first learned of the giant panda on Mar- uh, March 11th, 1869, when a French missionary, Amand David, received a skin from a hunter. The first Westerner known to have seen a living giant panda is the German zoologist Hugo Wiegold, who purchased a cub in 1916. But do you find it odd that the only ones who own pandas are, is China? 
like I was watching Owen Benjamin and he and I looked at some of the things that he was saying it's like like China has a mon- monopoly on pandas uh hold on a sec and the o- the only people who own pandas outside of China is Mexico how the fuck did those dirty bastards get him? Because they were given, China gave to them way back in the day, three, four, five decades ago, a panda. And China has made new. It's one that's asexual and just fucked on its own. It doesn't make any sense. I don't. I don't understand it. If it's one panda, it only makes no goddamn sense. Like how the fuck can one panda like reproduce? Uh, Valley Law, thank, thank you. Thank you. Anthony is really the leader of our uh, um, streaming. Yeah, hey, you hide out, Pete. You ain't no Peter Parker, Pete. I, I am not Pete, the leader. whatever your last name is that I don't <laughs> no, know you- because you sound I mean, honestly, no, 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 from the bottom of my guts, I don't know who you are, Pete, nor do I care. You're like the Scarlet Witch. This is you take everything from me. No one knows who you are. Fuck off, Pete. Checkpoint Fuck off and die. Yeah. And whatever little fucking weird pedo joke fucking cave you came from, you sick freak. All right, so Checkpoint was saying... Uh, Don't hang that- up with King Cod, Pete! Fuck off. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah, hell, black people. I love fucking uh, Terry Crews. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, pandas, they're fucking retarded, right? I don't fucking know. Have you but I wouldn't mind having a line on my kind of exiles as a pet. This is such nonsense. I just, I don't know. It's your nonsense. Yeah, there's a, there's a enclave. It's community is nonsense. You know what's so funny about the panda? They can only uh, procreate like two or three days out of a 365 day. Uh, and they're hot in like three days. <laughs> and if pandas are retarded... Again, I'm using Owen Owen Benjamin's argument at this point. Like, how do they... I just... It doesn't... And they have thumbs. I don't know. I don't know. Well, he's not the leader, just high, bro. leader of streaming. I don't know. I think Anthony is a, a smart... Um, like, he has drive. He has self-motivation. He's self motivated. It's because he doesn't have children. He looks like a little male stripper <laughs> right now. What the fuck's how, up with how, that outfit? How, like, why does this look so low? How do you backhanded with these backhanded compliments? <sighs> like, you no, know, honestly, I can not, give you no, a backhanded you, compliment you, too. Like, <laughs> just, like, honestly, DG looks like he's about to be the fucking uh, newest member of the Judgment Day. Hmm. It's what a day? WWE group. Oh, <laughs> and oh, I, oh, I actually oh. love the Judgment Day, but like, you'd be their cheerleader. You little bra top. <laughs> That's pathetic. Was it homoerotic? I don't think it was. It's not homoerotic unless you stick your dick in his mouth and then you like it. What? That's what I heard. I had a tab open and I clicked another. And you're like, damn it, that's Mandy Summers' boobs. I didn't want that. I would like to see Mandy's titties. I have no problem with that. Oh, you want that? Oh, I think I've got the image somewhere. Yeah, just send it to me. <laughs> Fuck, I do. I deleted that shit. Can't listen to her without all her tits. All right. So I have this. All 
I am it, you'll understand why he had to. Is be that here. Langa? What? Is that Langa? Oh, I don't. I don't fucking know who this person is. Stop that Langa. Stop. Yeah. Remove and me. maybe why people okay. to this day are still working on behalf of the deep state to try to get Flynn as far away from government as possible. Take a look at that. You decide. NYPD blows whistle on new Hillary emails, money laundering, sex crimes with children, etc. And then he also retweeted this. Hashtag spirit cooking. Hashtag never Hillary. Hashtag drain the swamp. All right. Isn't it interesting in uh, November 4th, 2015 or 16 or something? General Flynn said that about the spirit cooking that uh, Maria Abramovich, a uh, descendant of uh, Rasputin, said. Well, Brad, I have no idea what that means, and I am going to go play some fucking Xbox. Thank you for having me on, brother. All right, right. Good chat, baby. And um, the chat, give me the round kisses. Look at Dick. Have a have a good night, Rizzy. Are you going to do a Pete Callen cast? Well, I'm just going to call it Callen cast, but I'm going to go over all the fucking CG Puritan police. Maria Ambromovich isn't Russian. Okay, Mango. You're dumb. So Maria Ambromovich's brother is a part of the apparatchik that was connected to Nathan Rothschild and um the russian uh oligarch deripaska oleg deripaska she is romanian but she has russian slavic descent she's uh come on now come on come on you all you should all know about this she is You're telling me that the individuals who were living in Russia when they murdered the monarchy of Russia left and they didn't have children there and they didn't create the Browns and the Browder, Browers and the Bromfmans and they didn't but this like I don't, I don't there's some things that are should be like basic knowledge at this point for like anyone who's autistic anyways no 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 absolutely not so Putin's family uh was relegated to the cook so you went from monarchy to the cook and you cooked for Stalin and all of those uh, crypto Jews who took over commerce and trade inside of the Russian Empire during the Hundred Year War. What's up, Raptor? What's up, Raptor? I think he likes the I, idea and there, of my of new course, show. Is the art Say again? I think he, I think Raptor likes the idea of my new show. I like it. The swamp. All right. And there, of course, is the article. We've got General Flynn coming, Mom, back in. Okay. All right. We, we, we're back. We're back. All right. The gerbils. The gerbils. I don't know how many. And maybe there's a lot of people online. But what I was what I was getting at was that accountability. Yes. And we, ha we have to have accountability. We cannot continue down this road. And that's why they don't want Donald Trump anywhere near the White House again. Yes. Shortly before the election. And this was consequential in terms of, you know, my perception of you uh, in a positive way. You, you had tweeted out about the Wiener laptop and an article that uh, Eric Prince had given an interview to Breitbart. And there wasn't really too many high. So we talk about Eric Prince again. Who owns Eric Prince's presidential airlines now? The Patent Kings. Bayer. IG Farben conglomerates, modern day IG Farben, 
spider webs. Show receipts. Show receipts about what? Putin is royalty. They murdered the monarchs and they made his family the cook. That's standard practice in uh, destruction of, of royalty. There's nothing magic about that. I profile people, certainly nobody that was going into the Trump administration that had the balls to mention that, that talked about that. Mm -hmm. Do you think, well, not only do you think that we will ever finally get some retribution from what was on that laptop, and do you think that that had anything additional to do with why they said, no, there's no way we cannot allow Mike Flynn to enter government again, and certainly not for Donald Trump? Absolutely. I mean, 100 percent. And um, I was in, involved in, in, uh, in some, you know, privileged uh, communications, I guess, you know, and, and talking about the, the, the things that the New York City Police Department found on that laptop and how oh, yes. they found them. How they found them was is even more interesting. And, and that's that's a uh, how they found them is a technique that we we sort of mastered many. So I want to point out that uh, Lieutenant General Flynn here. Uh, used to run the DIA. And the DIA is larger than the CIA. They're larger than the DOD. They, they, they're kind of like the Homeland Security. They run themselves. And this motherfucker, who is Army, pure Irish Army, OG, brown eyes, brown hair, light skin, not many freckles, like he is a warrior. This is a modern day warrior. This motherfucker would have had, would have been ironclad with armor back in the day. I love General Flynn. He's great. You know, a few years prior to that on the battlefield to discover uh, how uh, members of Al Qaeda, senior members of Al Qaeda were communicating with each other on laptops and, and, in, and in, you know, from General Flynn is a part of the group. You remember uh, my last stream, I had the, um, it was the, it was the icon of the submarine and it had the Latin underneath it. Like General Flynn is the, the dude who wrote mimetic warfare or he trained the individual who wrote the mim mimetic warfare documents uh out of california like that's how brilliant this man is like he trained individuals with memes no, no no not q don't don't get that ridiculous he's not q from uh um what do they call cyber cafes and stuff like that and when they when I heard that, I was like, oh, my God, these guys, you know, these people, this is how they're, they're using those techniques to be able to communicate. And 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 it, it's nothing classified, really. I mean, but but um, so the answer is yes. And it's not just him. I mean, because okay. now, you know, we have the Hunter Biden laptop. Yeah. We have the, the you know, the Hillary Clinton emails. Buddy, and these people are corrupted and they're corrupt. Blackberries, bro. You remember Blackberries, Anthony? The phones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's when all <coughs> this how all these people got in trouble because they were using Blackberries on um on the it's not like the Wi Fi and the four G and all that, but they were and it's not the do 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 it's not that, but they were using signal intelligence on blackberries which are guaranteed cryptological devices <laughs> so, and that's why uh, one of the reasons why john mccain died did by all kinds of of of, of ugly disgusting behavior yes and and that behavior has to do with children mm -hmm. and it's sick Yes. It's, it's, it's a it's a it's a sickness. And so to me, that's what we are starting to see. We're starting to expose that. And I think that there's there's people out there 
uh, that are going to e- expose even more. Mm-hmm. And of course, when one of these people gets gets you know wrapped up or or that you know you try to get them, they take they abscond the country, right? Yep. And I, I don't. Yeah, and he's talking about the Arab dude who used to bring drugs in through soccer balls. Uh, who is that guy? Checkpoint. I know. I know you. You know what I'm talking about the Arab dude who has that giant clan in Pakistan. Um, like they used to. Oh my God, I cannot. I'm sorry, Pete's cracking me up. He's trying to flex because he said he's from South Philly. And I was like, dude, I lived in Philly. South Philly's a sandbox. He's like, I got stabbed in South Philly. I'm like, well, then you're a wuss. <laughs> mm. So, what, Anthony, what do you think about um, geopolitical espionage? Um, do you agree with it? You think it's fun? I mean, uh, from a wax poetic type of view, uh, yeah. I mean, it seems very romanticized, like, you know. Yes, it is. Right? But at the same time, I feel like it's, uh, I don't know, it gives a lot of power to a lot of people. Non Americans, right? Uh, or anybody, any country, any country that has like a CIA or KGB type uh, espionage uh, spy. The assassins. Type. Yeah, like they, they they have way too much power. Well, maybe not power is the wrong word, but no, I think power is the right word. They're god awful, god awful power, powerful. Like yeah. they... But we were, we were movies about you know like when you watch movies like like I mean maybe 007's is a little too campy for it, but like when you watch spy movies like it's very intriguing and you like you're well, like yeah. You remember the 007 thing is based off of a prince from Britain. And his uh, nonsensical fun times that he had completely embellished, of course. But there has to be reality. And uh, it's just like, um, who's that motherfucker who got killed? Uh, the the guy who made the video games. He also wrote all the books, but he ended up dying. The um, The Rainbow Six guy. Like, clearly he was getting information just like the guy who was writing the 007 books from the British Prince about their endeavors and the embell yeah, Tom Clancy and the embellishment that they like uh, a prime example would be Jason Bourne like clearly there's that program is clearly a reality and they need to embellish it so like there's no way especially with the like i've taken steroids and i i've known people who done ster like the amount of technological advances especially like with some of those motherfuckers that china has been making going into the olympics like those are creatures. They are perfect specimens. Film and have we film the movie? What? <laughs> Fucking cunt. <sighs> It's annoying. The new Patriots from Clint Kinsel. 
Yeah, well, he is just like um, uh, Dean Koontz. Remember, in the Eyes of Darkness, this Dean Koontz book, which was written in the um, early 90s, I think, it talks about the Wuhan virus out of China. Because that's a big DARPA. It's DARPA. Uh, Metal, Gear, Metal Gear Solid, you take out the science fiction, DARPA. Tom Clancy, take out the, the fantastical nonsense. DARPA. DARPA, 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 DARPA. I think I know about phantoms. Yeah, HP Lovecraft, style story. George Soros, he, um, uh, not the Days of Reliance, but he, not only was he tied to the people who did all the daytime morning dramas for like CBS or whatever it was, but he also wrote fantastical stories. And he used, I have one of them. Uh, somewhere on here. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I find it funny that he's in uh he's in the hospital now. Who? The George Soros. Is he? Yep. All of these um, guys who, because if you think about it, you know, I was talking about geopolitics earlier, like uh, Prince William, because, you know, Wales is very esoteric, very ancient, practice old traditions, Norse Empire, they track, they practice old traditions and all that. William is about to be king. Like you can't have all these old people of the old system be in positions of power when Prince Williams becomes King Charles IV or whatever name he takes. It's a very, it's, it's a standard monarch practice. That's why his wife is gone. His wife is somewhere safe. Yes, Mango. Uh, Kissinger just died as well. It's another individual uh, who needed to go. Yeah, but are they really gone? Who's taking their yeah, spot? Yeah, I think they are. I think they are. No, no. What I mean by that is who's taking their spot? Um, Jacob Rothschild, his uh, granddaughter, great niece. Uh, it's supposed to be Lynn. It's supposed to be Nate Rothschild. Then Lindy Rothschild, but they both fucked up because of the whole Russia and uh, ped pedophile things tied to Epstein. So uh, um, another woman took over Jacob Rothschild's. So she's the heir to uh, the Rothschild's state. I just meant in it's, terms of power. Yeah, it's not Lindy Rothschild and it's not uh, Nathan Rothschild or... The one who runs the Economist, David. It's not David. But what, 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 uh, it's really funny because um, I made a joke about uh, William's royal court Jew being a female, and of course, when Jacob Rothschild dies, he gives all the power to a woman. So I, 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 I found, it's like it just, you can't make it up. I try to be funny and I'm, I'm right. Yeah. A good to do child. She's French. Yeah. So the, um, so there's two, there's two big Rothschild banks and they were both ran by individuals who had the same name and they both got, uh, um, all of their books got taken over by the Department of Justice in the United States 
for the foreseeable future. And then within like a year or two of that Department of Justice um, precedent being set, uh, the French dude died and the German guy um, still lived. So there's been a lot of shuffling going around in that family on top of everything that they've been auctioning off. Um, the Rothschild family did one of the largest auctions that the family has ever done last year, 2023. They had huge museums set up with all these items from all of their mansions that they were selling. Tapestries, glass jars, <clears throat> ivory <throat> from like 16, 1700 Africa, things like that. Fascinating. So they, were, they were they were liquidating. Yeah. And you remember, because you remember the Rothschilds are the family that created the um uh what is the boy and the girl who are in the forest and they pick up all the crumbs? Oh, um, uh, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, Hansel and Gretel. So the Hansel and Gretel story came from these German forests, the the Black Forest that was that was owned by the Rothschilds. And after um, Donald Trump became president in 2016, uh, that estate was sold to a cardboard factory that is tied to like Turkey and all of those guys, the, the cardboard mafia, uh, as I call them. So find that Christ. So you own this estate for almost, you know, over 200 years and you sell it in modern times. It's where they did all the, that's where they hunted, they hunted children. That's where the, the all of this, these stories came from. Well, that was the Brothers Grimm that came up with all yeah. those stories. Yep, they're all tied to Rothschilds, all of them. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. But when you say yeah. tied, you just mean... Because, I mean, back then, there was like the... Yeah, well, back then, it was the Habsburgs. It wasn't the Rothschilds. It was, it was like Burgundy, like Southern France. Right. Um... Uh, oh. Southern Germany, which was, uh, but what I mean is like back then, like you had like the, for lack of a better term, it was probably is the term village, right? And there was always that rich family, which was probably them. And these other families were tangentially, like basically living under them. You know what I mean? Like. Because there wasn't mayors really back then. There was, you know, or well, it was you... um, it was bishoprics. So after the Holy Roman Empire Empire fell, you had you know, um, fiefdoms and bishoprics. So the fiefdoms were controlled by quote unquote royalty, and the bishoprics were controlled by quote unquote the Catholics, um, and they controlled whole swaths of areas, and that's eventually how the Germans created Protestantism and all that. Um, <laughs> hmm? Let's all copy DG's notes on this lecture for the test. Yeah. Well, what's funny is, um, you know, we're talking about the rot and Ghislaine Maxwell, her father, um, the Maxwell dude, not only is he buried in in Israel on top of uh, one of the mounts where they only bury their most prestigious assassins and, and individuals like that, but he was also a part of the group of people who were associated with George Soros who shorted the pound in the 90s. And it, it was right. Elaine Maxwell's father who, who did all that with the, the Soros clan from all the, the river regions of, um, you know, Czechoslovakia going down to Kosovo and Serbia and all that, like yeah, Mount Hermon. Yeah, that's where the assassins go. 
and supposedly he fell off of a yacht and was missing. Get Who? the fuck out of here with that. Ghislaine Maxwell's father. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. You know what's so funny about all of that is Ghislaine Maxwell's sister and her brother, they're the ones who did the computer systems for Obamacare and the Library of Congress. Interesting. In the Library of Congress, those computer systems are out of NSA computers in Maryland and Virginia. She got a powerful, it's, it's all a part of these patent dudes. Very, very interesting. Why aren't these videos? Fun? Okay. It did. Well, Robert Maxwell, I think he worked for the Vatican. Through and through. Through and through. Uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, basically, you know, stole your money, Mr. Tree Goblin. Stole your shit. protests following the murder of George Floyd in May of 2020, I do not believe any of them understood just how unique the D.C. National Guard is and the responsibility <coughs> that is delegated from the president to the secretary of defense and further. Do you know what's cool about the Northern Virginia Army? No. What's cool they're, about it? They're almost wholly controlled by the Treasury. Like the 301st Mountain Regiment and all those guys. That's just, right. you know, things you should take with you when you go to bed. Delegated to the Secretary. <laughs> I believe it is this lack of understanding that led to the Secretary. No. You know who doesn't have control over counterfeit money anymore or the Secret Service? Who? The Treasury. Do you know who controls Secret Service now? Wait, the, the Treasury ran the Secret Service? Absolutely. Uh, the Treasury created the Secret Service. Who controls the Secret Service today? I don't know. I would assume it was the uh, executive branch. The Department of Homeland Security. Yeah, that would make more sense than the Treasury Department. <laughs> no. So the original um, charter of the Treasury was to monitor counterfeit money and protect protect the highest established executive um, individuals that and makes no just sense. like the CIA they've been they've been um, they've been changed so the original intention of the Secret Service just like the original intention of the CIA is completely morphed into this modern day drama that makes no sense. What? That the Treasury would be in charge of the president. Absolutely. Because you remember before 1913, our Treasury was separate from private, private institutions. And as the, after 1913, when the Federal Reserve was essentially made, which was a usurpation of the monetary system of the United States government, they started to implement. So um, just like the United States Mint, the United States Mint is a very, very powerful organization, but their original charter, what they were created for no longer is, they no longer represent what they used to be. So. Yep. Well, the credit card that that was a uh, you can get into the credit card debate. That would be an interesting one, but it's worthless to be honest in the overarching 
like how much money has credit card fraud really impacted the United States monetary system versus like the DOD or the Department of Education or any of these modern day institutions. So, like Mayorkas. Mayorkas is a Jesuit trained in Jesuit colleges and he's been around since Clinton. Mm, yeah. That's my orcus. And I think the whole point of like what so you these people are so powerful. I don't think people really recognize the true power of America. Someone like my orcus who's been around since the early 90s after Bush senior. You it's like getting rid of Fauci. Getting rid of Fauci or my orcus is one of the most complicated convoluted like it's it's near impossible to get rid of these people and they and these people are like aristocrats in our bureaucratic system they are unfireable they are unpunishable you it's so you you need it's a senior executive service coming off, off of um, Eisenhower enacted by Carter. So the senior executive service is a wholly separate institution that has its own parameters of um, discipline, things like that, inside of a bureaucratic system, which is the United States of America. And they they have power over the bureaucratic positions in the senior executive service was created by the army and the army created the oss and the oss is the cia pinkertons yes yes lincoln lincoln was railroad mafia significant delays in the military response on january 6th I will not sit here today and say if we had been given authority to immediately respond when Chief Sun, the chief of the Capitol Police, made that first frantic call for support at 1.49 p.m., that we would have prevented the breach of the Capitol. What I can tell you with absolute certainty is that we had a force equipped and ready to respond. And that despite the inaccuracies of the DODIG report, we had a plan and would have liked the opportunity to try. Instead, we waited for hours less than two miles east of the capital, knowing our capital had been breached and not understanding why we had not received the authorization to respond. I cannot tell you the number of times someone has asked me, where were you? Where was the National Guard? Or how can you call yourselves Capitol Guardians? There's no easy response to those questions, and the truth is, we were there, and we were ready. We just weren't authorized to respond, and that is difficult to explain. The soldiers and airmen. Could you imagine the stress on this motherfucking bald man right here? Well, yeah, look, he's sweating his ass off, bro. Like, because you got to think of like, they will murder you. They will fucking murder you. If you step out of line. Look at how so, that lady like, right behind him is looking at him. Yeah, the lawyer. He's yeah. like, your time is done. <laughs> I don't it's, think he'll get killed, but like, it's so anyway, uh, I don't make the rules. <sighs> I like Secret Service. I have no problems with government. Do you want to stop counterfeiting? In the yep, 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 yep. Why didn't you kill the Q shot? The Q thing is fun. It's cool. It's really just a question. I, th I think is what I got from him. I don't really see the whole uh, Q. Um, I'm not a zealot like Pete <laughs> with CG. Like I don't, I don't see it like that. Do you know that um, money isn't printed on paper? Yeah, it's not paper. What is it? 
Um, it's fiber, isn't it? Cotton. It's cotton. Yeah. Cotton and fiber, yeah. I think they're, it feels like with what, like the whole Q thing, like his checkpoints brought it up twice. Like there's a, there's a paradigm swing in, in, in the United States federal government. And it's, it's swinging towards this idea. I have no idea what it is. And it's not, it's not, it's not a lark there. It's, um, behind every major action there has to be like some concerted reaction for civilization so there there our government is so set up to where you can't make honest truth anymore you cannot speak truth to power so there has to be a system every once in a while just like i was playing this video right here you there 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 it's the next step is destabilization again this word says for itself what it is to destabilize all the relations all the accepted institutions and organizations in a country of your enemy how you do it you don't have to send up a battalion of kgb agents to blow up bridges no you let them do it themselves and there are violent clashes between him and police, his group and, and ordinary people, no matter what. It's black against white, yellows against green, doesn't matter where the division line goes. As long as this group come into antagonistic clash, sometimes militantly, sometimes with firearms, that is destabilization process. Destabilization uh, process usually leads directly to the process of crisis. Crisis is when society cannot function any more productively, it collapses. So therefore, the population at large. So there's always crisis. You know, crisis happens um, every tw every twenty to thirty years. There's a crisis from a, a from a global perspective. And so, if 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 you understand that on a, on a thirty year scale, there's going to be this this form of confrontation then you can start to put together that after a hundred years there there is conflict and so like what we're seeing right now so world war one and world war two happened about a hundred years ago all of that is over we have ukraine you cannot have a strong president while negotiations are happening on a global scale from an American perspective on the borders of Ukraine. Like you, you maybe could have done it, uh, you know, during the Eisenhower era when we were making five-star generals with the Roosevelt's and all of those guys, but, but you can't do that now. So there, there's, there's this, there, I, I totally feel this paradigm swing. There is a, I mean, it just makes sense to go into the 2000 year anniversary of Jesus to, to fuck shit up. Like, doesn't it make sense? Like say, for example, if we had a contract, it's, 2024 we knew our contract ends in 2030 we got six years to do what we need to do to try to to get that contract signed you know wouldn't you wouldn't you anticipate some type of fighting animosity conflict you know what i mean right and and i'll make this argument as well, I'll bring in space. If Elon Musk is talking about having people in Mars in our lifetime, that means any contracts that are signed are negotiated for an extended period of time. 
So you you do you know how much gold is needed for these electronics? And in in eastern Ukraine, you have over five hundred metric tons of unmined gold. In in borders that you had previous to World War One and World War Two, wouldn't you want them back if you're going to renegotiate? Like it just there's so many steps. There's so many obvious. like actions that are being taken. I don't know. I don't know. You could never have Trump as president right now while Putin is getting his shit done. It just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I was there in the Oval Office days before January 6th when the president executed his authority to authorize the National Guard. And we've covered that. He cannot order them. He cannot hijack the military and order them deployed domestically. After President Trump's authorization, we immediately sent the secretary of the Army, who is responsible for the National Guard writ large, to Mayor Bowser and the Capitol Police controlled by then Speaker Pelosi, because as the governing authorities of the Washington District area... They have. What is Washington District? Anthony, do you know? Washington District is well. What is the Washington District area? D.C. It is an entity that is wholly separate from the United States of America. Yeah. That is um, placed with the burden of creating laws outside of their 13 to 23 23 mile boundary isn't that fascinating because you remember united states is a corporation and the president of the united states is in charge of the united states corporate trust like the vatican is a corporate trust the british empire is a corporate trust the the money that prints uh the british money for the 18 countries that they print money for is printed right. by a private industry. America. I, am, I have been paying attention, by the way, but I have to interrupt you. Pete is now officially a scumbag because he just literally lied through his teeth and said that I literally said I was in Comics Gate. Why do you have so much animosity with Pete? Because he's been lying his ass off for like two months, so fuck him. He's literally got an issue. Was. He's literally got an issue with me, not liking pedo jokes, which is weird unto itself. But I, yes. I, I'm just saying. Um, he literally just said that I'm not that I verbally said I wasn't CG. I think you and Pete need to kiss and make up. I think Pete needs a fucking foot up his ass. I saw on YouTube when the Q shaman incited insurrection armed with a buffalo hat and charming smile. Shamanism is so gay. I watched that video he did with, um, I said his name earlier. Benny, Benny Johnson. It was so cringe. Like this shaman, this shaman thing. It's the fucking cringiest shit in the world. He's not, I mean, so. The Q shaman had access to um, meetings outside of the public. So the Q Shaman guy actually got to sit down with um, the mayor of New York. What's his name? The new one? No, the... 
the, the one before Rudy this Giuliani. Guy? So he got he got he got. I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. I I I don't like Q talking about Q. I don't. I think it's silly. I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. But if you're the Q shaman and you get an audience with Rudy Rudy Giuliani outside of, um, I don't know. I don't know what to think of you. And he was in the army before. And if you know anything about the army, Space Force, they have the Q computers. They have the most powerful computers in uh, any of our governments, in any of our militaries. So I, don't I don't know what to think of the army. I like the army. I have no complaints. Yeah, I think I don't know what, what's going on with Pete and Anthony. I think Pete has a personal gripe with Anthony. Like maybe there was something. I, I don't know. I don't know. If it was, he won't say anything about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I don't think Q is a trap. Like I said, Q is a very st bro. Come on, checkpoint. You're one of the smartest dudes. Like you gotta understand. Like I think you. I think you know what's up. Like no, 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 no. Hmm. You must present yourself as weak during troubling times geopolitically. Like, you cannot be a dominant force. I just, I feel like, Checkpoint, you should, um, I feel like you should know that. I feel like that's... I made comment about, you know, the three and four star general being more of the political, like there, I, there are legit people in the military. I, I don't, I'm not an anarchist, so I can't, I don't, I understand what's going on. So if you know the world is governed by degenerate sex freaks, wouldn't you, like the Roman military, they allowed eunuchs and others into their military? Like you gotta, I don't know. I'm not black-pilled. I am not black-pilled. There's... Let's talk about the French government and the military, and the Germans. You, 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 you have to know in geopolitical war that during instances like such as something what Putin is doing, you have you have to. You have to give off the image that you're weak. So you deplete all of your gas reserves. You, you make it known that you're having um, issues with producing certain military weapons. You make agreements, but you backtrack on those agreements with sending the personnel or whatever, what have you, and you, you base it upon alone like so 
I don't know. I just, I don't know. Anthony, do you believe we're in World War Three right now? Yeah. Yes, me too. Me too. Yeah. In the history books, they'll probably say somewhere about two or three years ago was like the start of World yeah, War Yeah, like III. an encroachment or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I completely Cause, agree. Because when you look at history books, they'll say this was the start of World War Three or the or World War Two or the Civil War. The, yeah. But like... And, and they and they streamline everything, and it seems so like, like they had to have known right then that they were in the middle of the war, but they didn't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like when you live through it, it's like certain something had like what was it? What which battle of the Civil War where they were having the picnic? Was that Gettysburg? What do you? What? During the civil war, war. during during the civil war, it was that that where like it was like one of the first battles and like the they no, nobody took it seriously and the people were having picnics watching and then it was like one of the bloodiest battles and like the fucking people ran. Did you, I think that was Gettysburg, wasn't that Gettysburg? Right, like, right. I, so possibly, but what you're saying makes perfect sense. Like, like w- imagine the civil war in the United States and them having the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, it would have been much more contentious back then than what we're dealing with now, even though I, I agree with what you were saying that we are in that world war because one of the, the, so when Donald Trump lost his presidency and Joe Biden became the president, all of a sudden, all of our ports had all of these container ships that were no longer able to to deliver their goods. And they weren't able to load their goods to take them to other countries. Like, like I see that as the, the beginning of this world war because every fight that we're getting in deals with the exchange of goods. Container ship prices are like quadrupled um all of the north sea empire people like brussels norway sweden england scotland and all that are are, are having to pay it's ah, it's so fascinating yes yes it's not a digital war it's it's kinetic the kinetic war has been going on you can you can go back to Obama, to be honest with you, with the drone strike campaign that he was doing and count that as a kinetic war that he was implementing on a different social society that are that is wholly, wholly different than ours and he was straight up bombing them with drones, so... You can go back to Libya with uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Maybe it was you know, funny. They killed Muammar Gaddafi because he was trying to create a Central African currency, and the French and the British were like, "Motherfucker, no!" And so they killed him. And now you have BRICS, which is three or four or five times as powerful and superior to, to what Muammar Gaddafi was trying to implement. So it's like their actions uh, like glo- like you you I hate the Europeans. I hate the Europeans. They fuck everything up. There is no such thing as a butterfly effect. Just like there is no Mandela effect. The butterfly effect and the Mandela effect was created by the internet. Just like the panda bear. Do you agree, Anthony? Uh, wait. 
that there's no such thing as a butterfly effect? Do you know Nelson Mandela after he got out of his Jesuit prison training? One of the first things that he did was go and plant a tree in France, in Burgundy, next to a Templar te temple. Why would you go plant a tree next to a Templar temple? I have no clue. I don't know. Why would you do that? Were there really Americans during Napoleon's army? So, if you know anything about Napoleon's family, they were a part of that whole esoteric Rosicrucian group that uh, had tie uh, that were essentially sign S E I N E sign river merchants that had a monopoly on the rivers coming out of Germany and the lower Alps in the foothills. So, I mean, did we really? Jesus. And he was a sign, his family are sign river merchants. Part of the Pettacy. Oh, fuck. Bless you. Where did that come from? I don't know. Fuck. I Bless felt you it. again. All right, Anthony. Do we want to talk about anything else? Um... No, not really. What do you think about Napoleon? Did he drink blood or not? I mean, back then, I wouldn't put it past people. People, A lot of people drank blood back then. Yeah. Fuck Napoleon. He was one of the last individuals who had an emperor status to where he could... Uh, so he was a merchant family turned emperor. And he could knight certain Holy Roman families going from Germany, northern Germany, Denmark regions, all the way down to the foothills of the Alps on the northern side. So. And then the Catholic Church sent that bitch to an island to die of an supposed ulcer. So. Good old Catholic Church. How do we want to end this stream, Anthony? Let's see here. Perfect. I have a perfect image. No, the Basque are not ethnic Atlanteans. The Basque have R1B1 and R1, R1B1A haplogroups. <coughs> Genetically, they are closer to Anthony and I from a genetic haplogroup standpoint. 
than blue-eyed haplogroup individuals or those from the steppe. The Basque are a major. I think like the majority of Basque are ninety-something percent brown eyes and ninety-something percent brown blonde hair or brown you know what do you call it uh, dirty blonde hair their genetic makeup comes from north eastern spain southwestern france to the mountains to the pyrenees mountains to the foothills of the pyrenees Uh, they're gross. Not all Basque are RH negative. Oh my God. Checkpoint. I'm going to end the stream. I'm ending the stream right now. Anthony, goodbye. I'm not going to stay in the back room so we can just leave together at the same time. All right. Five, four, three, two, one.